display information related to water fluoridation on their websites. Texas House Bill 1581 would require the amount of fluoride, the name of the company supplying it, the combined amount of fluoride in the drinking water from all sources, the annual cost of adding fluoride to the drinking water distributed by the system, and more. If passed by a vote of two-thirds of all the members, the bill goes in effect immediately. If the vote passes with less than two-thirds, it will go into effect September 1, 2015. Two new parents are in the midst of a national tour promoting the use of Bitcoin and highlighting their experience raising a child with no birth certificate or Social Security card for the undocumented human tour. Alma Summer and Brian Stiff are traveling with baby Neo, who was born October 17, 2014, without a birth certificate or Social Security number. The family is traveling from Southern California to the Bitcoin Summit in Arizona and the Texas Bitcoin Conference in Austin. They are also working on connecting the decentralized network of individuals who do not submit their children to government documents for proof of birthday and location of birth. You can follow their adventures on their blog online at undocumentedhuman.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Hear from speakers like Charlie Schramm, Dr. Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, and Catherine Bleich. March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Tickets on sale now at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Use coupon code LibertyBeat for $25 off your ticket. That's coupon code LibertyBeat. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, March 13th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The Total Losers Corpse contained no traces of drugs or alcohol, and a superstitious Delta Airlines adds busty mermaids to its plane noses. My friend, you look like you are in need of the world's finest internet news summaries. Please come in and warm yourself by the fire of knowledge. This is the Onion Week in Review. A new law passed in Colorado this week will allow residents with a doctor's prescription to purchase medicinal fireworks, saying that those in need of stargazers, firecrackers, and galleria highlights now need only obtain a doctor's doctor's prescription, state officials expressed hope that the law would ease the suffering of those in need of huge, dazzling explosions. And in this week's op-ed pages, a man notes that, like it or not, we all die, then get dug up and molested. In other news, white male privilege is squandered on a job at Best Buy, and a local TCBY has missed the past two logo changes. Well, that's it for now. Goodbyes are bittersweet, my love, so I'll only tell you, for more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you, of course, can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in toll-free here and join us on the phones at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The us includes me, Ian. And me, Mark. On this live Sunday edition of the program, coming up tonight, a hacker is holding a police department website for ransom after they stand behind killer cops. Plus... Uh, the latest on the D.C. legalization of cannabis, residents, some residents are complaining about too much pot smoke. We'll uh, tell you more about what's happening in D.C. And, of course, we'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. Plus, the story about the restaurants shutting down in uh, Seattle prior to the hike in the minimum wage to $15 an hour. There's a pretty outrageous copyright decision at a, in a court regarding uh, the Robin Thicke song, Blurred Lines, and what what does that mean for the future of the music business and copyright in that uh, in that realm. The toll-free number here is, again, 855-453-FREE. Crichton is with us, listening in Kentucky, to start things out here tonight. Hello, Crichton. Hi, guys. Hey. Last night, last night started off with a bang, and you know, it just burned all night. Um, but... Uh, when it started off last night, you guys were talking about uh, abortion, uh, but Mark commented on a potential resolution to that problem and many others being that voluntary associations of government. And I was hoping that he would that Mark would hit on the word, but he never hit on the word. Okay, what's the word? I, I don't know. If he, the, the word bird. he's looking for right there is a file. 
a P H Y L E file. Okay. It's a Greek word. It means clan, but it, in this modern context, it is a voluntary association that does not claim a monopoly of force, hmm. but functions otherwise as a government. That's um, interesting. That, I never heard that, that word before. Exactly the term he was looking for. Okay. A file. Have I heard it? What I like to use is um, – so it's it, new words are great and fun, but I like to use uh, words that people already know and are familiar with in order to communicate with them because I think that, um, you know, like my role – is less as a vocabulary teacher and more of an instructor in, uh, you know, just sort of the ideas of a voluntary association. And so if I can use uh, yes. terms that people are familiar with, then I'm, I'm more likely to. I like this word, but that doesn't... I know, I know. I agree with that position, but of course you guys should occasionally use the words that, that apply because yeah. they're not unfamiliar to a lot of people that are... I mean, to some people they're not unfamiliar. Um, but... The, the best example, you know, how, you know how these kind of ideas tend to show up in fiction before they show up in, in the common lexicon? Yeah. Uh, a really good book with a really great story is called The Diamond Age, and it, it very well plays out. Files play a major yeah, role. Yeah, they do use that term in there, don't they? That's uh, from Neil Stevenson, yes. am I right there? That's correct. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a great story. There's no doubt about it. It's a little weird, but, um, you know, no <laughs> doubt. Pretty awesome. Crichton, anything else you want to share tonight? No, I just wanted to share that. Thanks for the call. Appreciate what, it. What I liked about the Diamond Age is what they showed was essentially the sort of trickle down of wealth. Um Today, uh, you know, poor people enjoy, uh, even if you're not talking about government programs or anything like that, if you're just talking about sort of voluntary um, uh, programs out there, they enjoy really nice, clean streets, relatively safe uh, societies, um, you know, beautiful buildings around which they can, you know, be homeless. Um, and, you know, most of them are going to eat. Generally, they will not starve. And also people give out food and that sort of thing. Apparently, wealth became such uh, so abundant there that uh, essentially these 3D printing machines were available even to people who didn't have homes, um, that they have a certain area for the poor folks. I mean, these people are basically unemployed, but um, the, the wealthy people just to sort of wanted them filed away somewhere so they didn't have to deal with them, so they gave them some things to keep them busy. And I, I thought it was, you know, fascinating, honestly. Seattle's $15 minimum wage law goes into effect April 1st, about two weeks away. As that date approaches, restaurants across the city are making the financial decision to close shop. This from shiftwa.org. The Washington Policy Center writes that, quote, closings have occurred across the city from Grubb in the upscale Queen Anne Hill neighborhood to Little Uncle in Gritty Pioneer Square. Hey, these don't sound like uh, chain businesses, do they, Mark? These no. sound like uh, local mom and pops. Many times when people think about uh, the minimum wage, what they're concerned with is places like Walmart paying more to mm -hmm. their employees. But in um, there's also, you need to consider, there's a lot of pizza joints out there that pay minimum wage, too. And uh, Little Uncle in Gritty Pioneer Square to the Boat Street Cafe on Western Avenue near the waterfront. Of course, restaurants close for a variety of reasons, but according to Seattle Magazine, quote, the impending minimum wage hike to $15 per hour is playing a major factor. And that's not surprising, considering about 36% of restaurant earnings go to paying labor costs. According to Seattle Magazine, Washington's Restaurant Association's uh, Anthony Anton puts it this way, quote, it's not a political problem, it's a math problem. He, he <laughs> estimates yes, it is. that a common budget breakdown among sustaining Seattle restaurants so far has been the following. 36% of funds are devoted to labor, 30% to food costs, and 30% goes to everything else, the other operational costs. The remaining 4% has been the profit margin. And as a result, in a $700,000 restaurant, he estimates the average restaurateur in Seattle has been making $28,000 per year. With the min that's, not whole that's not a lot of money. No, not uh, that much. With the minimum wage spike, however, he says that if restaurant owners made no changes, the labor cost in quick service restaurants would rise to 42%, up from 36%. And in full-service restaurants would rise to 47%. Restaurant owners expecting to operate on thinner margins have tried to adapt in several ways, including higher menu prices, cheaper lower-quality ingredients, reduced opening times, and cutting work hours and firing workers, 
according to the Seattle Times and Seattle Eater magazine. As the Washington Policy Center points out, when these strategies are not enough, businesses close. Workers lose their jobs, and the neighborhood loses a prize. And amenity. prices go up, um, because this is important. That when was one of the things they're doing. It was supply, no, no, but the prices are going to go up, because what's going to happen is the supply is diminishing, right? So if you want a pizza, mm -hmm. and one-third of the pizza restaurants have closed, that means a third of the supply of pizza is gone, right. correct? Yep. Now, yeah, these other pizza places can manufacture more pizzas for you, but it's sort of a, a variety of pizzas, the different types of pizzas. There's lots of pizza places here in Keene. You can get a New York pizza. You can get a, a Chicago and pizza. You can get sort of your standard fare, that fluffy crust thing, and then, of course, there's all the, the Greek other Greek pizzas. What's that? They're Greek pizzas. Yeah, there's Greek pizzas, too. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of pizzas that you can get, and you can get them all made in all different places. What's going to happen is, is essentially when there's less competition, then the other businesses are going to enjoy uh, more customers coming to them for more pizzas. Yep. So they're going to be able to hike their prices a little bit. And it's not going to be just uh, them making more money from selling more pies. They will also increase their margins on selling more pies because you have no place to go. And that's how the marketplace works. Well, the other reason they're hiking prices is because they're paying their employees more. And in this Seattle will be this will be considered right. Well, this will be considered a victory for the the, the social planner types because they'll say, look, yeah, pr pizza, pizza prices went up by. Uh, 50 cents. And see what we have. We have a better society for it. Thank us for our meddling. Well, they're not going to point out all the businesses that have closed. They'll only point to the uh, employees who are now getting paid $15 an hour and act like they are the great saviors. If you do make them look at the businesses that closed, they'll say that the, you have to break some eggs in order to have some success. We're talking about workers' rights here. And frankly, what they'll say, look, most of these people that were making the pizzas, they went to work for the other restaurants. They're making more money. They're not getting the $28,000 a year. Now they're making $30,000 a year as a pizza manager yeah, at one of the places. That's not very likely. Though, because those places already have managers, they're not hiring uh, new new people into these positions. Well, those people likely are not going to stay unemployed forever. Ed's in New Jersey, listening to WPG. Hello, Ed. Good evening. How hey, you doing? Good. Guys? What's on your mind tonight, Ed? I wanted to bring up the Ferguson thing. Uh, uh, I see they caught the guy uh, supposedly today uh, that shot both the police officers. It's actually the first time we've talked about it. I think on Free Talk Live, unless Mark, you covered it last week. I we did cover it, uh, you know, while you were gone. Okay, all right. So stand by, Ed. We'll let you come back here in a moment uh, and talk about that. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. The effects of the minimum wage. We can discuss that further. Plus copyright. There's a court case verdict that's come down. We'll tell you about that and how it's going to affect things. Or perhaps it's Free Talk Live. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. How fast are new Allegra gel caps? I didn't know you got a cap fast. How strong are new Allegra gel caps? Ten more lawns to go strong. Non-drowsy Allegra gives you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin, and stays strong for 24 hours. It's relief when the pollen's off the charts strong, even in the convertible. New Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster. Nothing's stronger. Guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237.
Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. The first point is it's legal and that's important. Now, my question to you would be they gassed Jews legally in Germany. Was that a good law? Well, I don't know. I don't live in Germany. Come on. You don't know? You don't know whether it was a good idea to gas Jews. You don't know whether it was a good idea to incarcerate Japanese Americans during World War II. What does that have to do with them crossing the borders of the United States of America? I'm making a point, and I'm drawing a parallel, and it's a clear parallel, and you're dodging it. Do good people disobey bad laws, Buck? No. Good people do not disobey bad laws? Criminals dodge the law. Uh, Buck, uh, wait a second. What if they outlawed guns in your state? Would you turn yours in, Buck? Oh, absolutely, in a minute. You would? Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. You're a fascist. Yeah. Bye. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Now would be the perfect time to crack open a bottle of your Cameron Hughes wine if you've ordered some. And apparently a number of our listeners have done so. Oh, yeah. Apparently we've been um, among their top producers as far as uh, an advertising venue. I'm really happy to hear that because, you know, sometimes some things work better than others. And apparently wine works better than others. Well, you know, it's often been said in the libertarian community that uh, alcohol, tobacco and firearms should be the name of a uh, convenience store, not a policing organization. And, um, you know, there you go. So not a surprise to me that things worked out well. Chwine.com. What Cameron Hughes does is Cameron Hughes goes to the uh, the the top uh, the, the the posh wineries around the country, mostly in California, but he has um, some around the world, and he gets their best you know their overstock of their best wines, right? Like so, all their wines good, and he gets the overstock, and then he private labels them himself so that you don't know where they came from, just sort of that batch came from there. But, you know, batch 471 came from, you know, there, wherever it was. You don't know where there is, though. So, and you, you know, these are $70 to $100 bottles of wine generally. These wineries are getting uh, rated uh, 90s and above, and I guess that's uh, that's a good thing. And what he, the sort of the the deal he made with us is, is that if we have a coupon, if people use our coupon code, they get free shipping. Now, liquids weigh a lot to ship. If you get six bottles of wine, it's going to be relatively um, heavy. So it's a big savings to go to chwine.com. All you have to do is click on the microphone in the upper left-hand corner and put in FTL, and you'll get free shipping. These are top-grade wines for something like $15 a bottle, $15 to $25 a bottle, and they should be $70 to $100. You'll love it. Check it out. Trust me on your first batch, and then after that, it can speak for itself. Mm. If you drink wine, just try this. Trust me. CHWine.com. Yep. All right. Toll free number. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, limited time on that free sh- uh, shipping offer. Abs- yeah. Every, everything in life is a limited time offer. If you don't believe that, then uh, you haven't been on planet Earth enough. All right. So we're going back to your phone calls and thoughts here. Ed is in New Jersey. We've been talking about the minimum wage. And Ed, you wanted to discuss Ferguson, where there were two uh, police officers shot. Were they shot to death? I honestly have not been following no. the story. No, they weren't. Uh, one has a bullet 
that they, he was released from the hospital. He still has a bullet in his head. Oh wow! The other one, I believe, the other one I believe was shot in the shoulder. But what I was calling about was how one person. This only took one person to start the whole the whole thing of Ferguson. And I know everybody, a lot of people are tired of hearing about it. But what I'm trying to bring to your attention is the chain reaction. How a town was destroyed and lit on fire. How a police re, uh, force had to resign. The whole chain reaction. What what I'm getting to is this. The the everybody knows that the the guy that committed the crime, and and fought with the cop, he was guilty. I just don't understand how it even turned into. A, and I don't like even throwing the race thing, but how it turned into a race thing when everybody knows he was guilty of the crime. If you do the math and, and you, you you figure everything that happened. Now, wait, when you say uh, you're talking about Michael Brown, the uh, uh, initial situation in Ferguson. And guess what? I'd like to say this, too. He got what he deserved. You don't fight a cop and then try uh, and try to grab his gun. He got everything that happened to him. He got what he deserved. Well, Maybe I don't know if he got what he deserved. Yeah, what, we don't what, know what happened. The difficulty is, he wait a Listen, second. I, I'm glad that you're so sure. But can I? We, I understand. I'm glad you're yeah, very, very sure of this. Cop. Can I talk? I'm no, glad. I thought I was the one that was given the chance to talk. You are. Been, yeah, how long have you well, talked? You didn't let me finish. You've been you talking for 90 off. seconds here. We're trying I to have a conversation. Cut you off. We've been, we're, we're trying to have a conversation here. Well, you're I'm making some statements talk. that you sound very sure of, but right. I don't know if I'm so sure I about am those very things. Sure of it. When you try to hit a cop and grab his gun, then how do you know he tried to hit a cop? That's what the cop said. How do you know that's true? What did he do when he walked in the store? That's not answering the question. The I asked you a question. How do you know he hit a cop? From the media. That's how I know. You don't know from the media. <laughs> from the media. Somebody <laughs> said something somewhere. <laughs> you see, the you problem is police officers across this country have no obligation. He got what he deserved. The police officers. I'm putting him on. Police hold. officers in this country have no obligation. To, uh, to wear cameras. I want to know what happened. That police officer is supposed to be my employee. That's the story we're told. And He if, hung up, by the way. If, if he's my employee, I want to be able to see what occurred when he decided to use deadly force on somebody. That's not a crazy stance to take. That's a pretty moderate stance to take. Now, yeah, if you reach for a police officer's gun, you're probably committing suicide. Mm-hmm, yep. And I don't, you know, like my, I will not lose sleep over your, uh, you know, your, your, your misspent life. But uh, at the same time, I'm not just going to assume that everything that's said by some police officer is true. There's so much evidence that police lie. I mean, a lot of cops are trained to lie. In fact, they're trained to tell lies to suspects to try to get them to, you know, give up information on their buddies, for instance. So it's not uncommon to, we've seen police lying on the stand in court here in Keene, New Hampshire. We saw an FBI agent tell lies on the stand here in court. Well, just because you've seen a police officer lie doesn't mean a police officer is lying. But in the same way, just because you've seen a police officer tell the truth doesn't mean police officers are telling the truth. They need evidence for the things that they claim. And when, you know, just words coming out of their yeah. mouth. In 2015, when we all have video cameras running around in our pockets, more than 50% of people have smartphones, it's absolutely patently ridiculous that I, as a taxpayer, should have to believe uh, uh, some employee about what happened. I want video and I want audio. Yeah, I didn't and say if you cops. don't have it, if you don't have video and you don't have audio, you probably should let that person go because you don't have sufficient ev ev evidence. Well, I, uh, I wasn't saying all cops lie, Mark, but they are trained to lie as part of their job, and we have caught them in lies multiple times. So it's not unbelievable to me that a cop would tell a lie, especially a cop who's trying to save his butt from possibly being fired or getting catching criminal charges. I mean, the more danger an officer is in personally, the more likely they're going to try to lie their way out of it. And so did the cop lie in this circumstance? We don't really know because the other guy's dead. So he can't really tell his side of the story. And I'm not the kind of person who's just, just going to believe the cop because he's wearing a badge. That's not good enough for me. Now, I think that Ed, w during his shouting there, I think he said his son was a cop. So that, Oh, did he? I didn't hear it. Yeah, it was very quick. Um, yeah, you know, so that's the kind of bias uh, that likely is going to lead to someone believing the police every time. Well, you know, the police are good guys. The police are there to help people. There's this narrative about the police in this country that is inculcated within us from a very young age. In fact, uh, Derek Jay, who is our Monday night co-host, he hosts a show called Cop Block Radio, 
on LRN.FM, he actually was sent this uh, book about like the police and children, and it's very sort of written for young kids. And the messages, you know, how great cops are, and the cops are your friends, and all this. And you know, the fact is, they're not your friends. Uh, they're out there to put you in handcuffs. They're out there to find something to put uh, put you away for. And I wish that weren't true. I wish the cops were actually friendly and that they were actually uh, peace officers whose sole job it was to stop bad guys from hurting peaceful people. But instead, they're out there arresting teenagers for underage possession, for uh, possession of cannabis and all other manner of things that actually have no victim. So people don't trust the police. And there's a good reason for it, because they've earned the distrust. Well, to some extent, um, arrest after arrest. Ferguson looks like an occupied territory when you see that 20 percent of the towns uh, of the city. Uh, uh, revenues, uh, the court fine here, um, reliance on court fine revenue, 20.2%. That's a pretty big that's portion huge. of the budget. That It looks like a, an occupying force in many ways. All right, we'll come back with more. You can share your comments on Ferguson or whatever's on your mind here. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach five into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This well, is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, no. Now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are 
are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. It's the live Sunday edition of the program. As always, plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts about whatever's on your mind. Coming up, Blurred Lines. A, uh, it's a pop music song from a couple of years ago, I guess. Maybe just a year ago. Anyway, there's been a, a lawsuit about that song, and it's going to have an effect on the world of copyright which is an ugly, terrible world, and we can talk more about that here in a moment. You can also join us online at freetalklive.com, where you can get interactive on a variety of different things, including the front page of the website. You can actually create the content right there at freetalklive.com. And Free Talk Live accepts Bitcoin. In fact, Mark, you are extending the Bitcoin offer uh, that we the Bitcoin put out. sale. Yeah, the Bitcoin fire sale, as we called it. Uh, for anybody who has been looking to maybe advertise something here on Free Talk Live, we are now offering Bitcoin purchaser, uh, purchasers, people paying for their advertising in Bitcoin, 50% off. 50% off rate card, yes. So that's pretty amazing. And if people are interested in that, they can get in touch with you, Mark, directly at mark at freetalklive.com. And if you don't yet have Bitcoin, well... The reason, by the way, I want to make it uh, clear. The reason that, to some extent, the reason I'm um, deciding to do that is, is because I believe in the future of Bitcoin. I believe that P Bitcoin is going to be used more and more by more people. I think it's going to be adopted from the ground up. And I think that that increase in utility is going to drive an increase in value. And so I'm willing to take a little hit today in order to you know, have more in the future is the idea. And Free Talk Live gets a great deal of its revenue out of Bitcoin. I love being part of the Bitcoin economy. Yeah, we were one of the first advertising venues in the we world. Were the maybe, first. maybe the first in the in the whole world. I'd like somebody else to take make a claim. But if you want to buy with Bitcoin, you got to get Bitcoin first. And to do that, go to ExpressCoin.com. You can get Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin from ExpressCoin.com, and you can do it easily. Whether you're in the United States or Canada, you can send them a money order, check, or wire transfer, and they send you Bitcoin. It's very simple, and you can use our code FTL to get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency with no fee at all at ExpressCoin.com. Plus, they've got an app. You can download that also at ExpressCoin.com. So go and get your cryptocurrencies there. By the way, they're a licensed money services business. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL as we continue with your calls and well, thoughts. Oh, Mark, you wanted to clarify something regarding Ed in uh, in. New Jersey. Yeah, Ed, Ed seemed a little put out that uh, he didn't get to like, t uh, you know, get to say everything that he wanted over, you know, without any inter interruption or anything like that. And like Free Talk Live is an opportunity to call in and talk about what you want to talk about, and Ed certainly could do that. And he managed. We we let him go for you know, probably something like ninety seconds without an interruption. You know, time's kind of sped up on radio. You, you know, you got to have uh, abbreviated conversations. We have, our segments are ten minutes long. So, uh, yes, you can bring up whatever you want, but that doesn't mean we're not going to talk to you about it, right? Like the, the radio program yeah. where anybody can call in and lecture us for as long as they'd like and we don't hop in on anything is a boring radio program. And I think, um, conversely, that we all need somebody to sort of step in and break our paradigm if we're uh, – if, if the way we think about things. That's true for the hosts here, and that's true for callers. In my opinion. So what I was hoping to do was introduce the idea that in a country that's uh, supposedly free, that we should be presumed innocent until proven guilty. And that's why I think that the, the Michael Brown, you know, that his stances in the Michael Brown case, although I do think that Michael Brown is a pretty unenviable character, right? Like he's, you he know, just doesn't seem like a great guy. Didn't seem like a great guy to me, but. You know, I want to know what my police officers are doing, and that's not um, – there's nothing wrong with that from a citizen standpoint. And I, I felt like he was jumping to too many conclusions. Michael's on the line in Atlantic City listening to WPG as well. Hello, Michael. Hello. Thanks for having me on. Sure. Go ahead. First, I'd like 
First, I'd like to correct you, gentlemen. Uh, police officers are not employees of uh, the regular public, you know, general public. Oh, I don't think they are. The Wait a minute. They're employees, legally, they're employees of the Justice Department, the, the courts, and stuff like that. Yep. But let's, let's try to work this thing out logically. The evidence that I have, that I know, that what I see, what I read, what I see on television and hear on the radio is, then Michael Brown was a hothead when he walked into that uh, store and he pushed around the owner and uh, I think he sold some things. And I'd like to ask you sort question. of did the owner did the owner of that store at that point when Michael Brown was doing those things to him did he have a right to shoot him? Did I think he, he did. Okay. Why? So if, he strong point, armed, he, if he strong armed, if he strong armed robbed the guy, even if what's it was the evidence he strong armed robbed the place. Well, he took something okay, with. So he, so he got away with it then. Now wait, 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 wait. We're still talking about what you just brought up. Hang on, Michael. What's the evidence he strong arm robbed the place? Is, is, in my, I heard he paid for it. Well, he threw the money at him. That I see, well, wait a minute. The evidence that I see. Let's say he. I see that he pushed that gentleman around. I actually see that on the video. If so, somebody's getting pushed around, do they have a right to defend themselves? Yeah, for sure. Okay, if he had a weapon, a legal weapon, and he could use it, did he have a right to use that weapon to shoot him? To defend himself. Yeah, if you feel like your life is in jeopardy, then I would say you probably do have that right. Yes. Okay, so now, so now it shows me that what Michael Michael Brown had a tendency to be a hothead and and be violent. So now you expect me to take the words of of people. Uh, well, let's put it this way: you you expect me to take the words of uh, of black people who are brought up most of the time most of the time. To think that their woes and their problems are caused by the white man and that it's their responsibility to do whatever they can to take that back from the white man that took it from them. And, and a lot of them are, are, are grown up in homes where the parents themselves teach them that not to trust the cops. Not to, and you tell well, me I would teach I'm my kids not to trust the cops. I mean, anybody who is... Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. You're, you're asking me to take the word... Of, of, of people that are brought up in that environment against a No, I'm not officer. asking you to take those people's word. I'm just saying don't take the police's well, yeah, the word. The gentleman just said to that other guy that called that we're supposed to take the words of, a, of, of uh, you know, we're not supposed to take the words of police officer. So we're supposed to take the words. No, you're jumping to a conclusion. You're presuming that simply because I said don't trust the police means that you should trust the other people. I'm not saying that at all. I would like to see video of a circumstance so there is some sort of an objective record of what actually happened. Witness testimony is notoriously unreliable. But why do you, why do you need the video when you have all the other evidence? What do you need what, what, video for? Why in the world would you want video? In 2015, evidence? when people in other words, carry around why, video the cameras. It's irrefutable that the guy was shot in the head on the way down. He was charging the guy. How much evidence do you want that the guy was charging him? <laughs> he didn't have his hands up and his back turned. I don't know what the evidence is because I haven't well, seen. Well, what the evidence is. You have all these guys Of course they're the telling you what the evidence is because right. they're the police and I'm they have a story. I'm sorry that I just don't trust the government anymore. Yeah. It, you know, You're I, a I sucker if you trust the government. I didn't come about this opinion with no particular for no particular reason. You used to support the police pretty blindly, Mark, if I recall correctly. Yeah, yep, on this about show. About a decade ago. Well, I'm not supporting the police blindly, but you asked me to take the word of the I'm no, not sir. asking you to do anything. No, sir. You keep insisting that I'm asking asking you to take someone's word, and I haven't asked you to take anyone's okay, word. Okay, well, let's put it this way. The evidence weighs, to, for me, the evidence that I see and I hear weighs more... That you saw where? On the media? Brown, the mainstream media? Than, than, it, than it does the police officer. Where'd you see the evidence? On the mainstream media? I don't see why a police officer would go out and just shoot somebody for no reason. Did you hire your own guy to perform an autopsy? No, but I, oh, I well, mean, that's uh, if you don't think... Asking me to, hold oh, well, on. You're not asking me, but I can't buy the fact that that a police officer would just shoot a person for absolutely no reason. Tell you what, there's this. Uh, you've got this device in your home. It's called a computer. Go to it. Yeah. Go to a website called Google.com and type in "police officer shoots a man for no reason." Oh, and there's plenty of those videos. That, that, that black people shoot police officers for no reason. Are you a racist? Sir? I love how he keeps on bringing up black are, people. This are you, is awesome. Are you a racist? Because no, it's. This is what it, this is what it has to do with. It has to do with race. Blacks are the ones demonstrating and rioting. They're That's that ridiculous, sir. There. You have no idea what you're talking about, and you're blinded by your racism. Thank you for the call tonight. Um, anybody that watched video footage of the riots in Ferguson knows that there were people of all different shapes and colors and ethnicities down there in those riots. So please get real. Uh, the problems with the police 
are had across the board. It's certainly true that the police mess with uh, people who might be considered uh, darker skinned more often. But I suspect that's because there's racist cops just like the guy that just called in. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. And no, I'm not saying trust the uh, the witnesses of that situation. Witnesses by, you know, by their nature are untrustworthy. They don't remember things correctly. There's been plenty of evidence about that. More coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free 
Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free if you want to join us here on the radio. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. If you like Free Talk Live and you want to support the show, one way you can do that is by shopping with us over at shop.freetalklive.com. You enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. Free Talk Live will get a cut of the sale, whatever it is you're buying. Uh, personally, I just got a neat little device, Mark, that actually allows you to plug in cigarette lighter to cigarette lighter in a car uh-huh. and jump a jump a car. Really? It's amazing. Uh, Chris Cantwell got one of these things, and uh, he actually used it to jump my girlfriend's car the other day, and so I saw this thing work when other things weren't working. So uh, pretty amazing. You can go and get stuff like that over at uh, Amazon and all kinds of other things as well, and Free Talk Live uh, gets a cut. When you enter through shop.freetalklive.com, as we continue here, Dana is on the lines with us here on uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hello, Dana. Hi, guys. Hey, I appreciate the passion of the last two gentlemen, but I'm going to just stick with the facts. And um, but I understand why they're getting really upset because it's getting to the point where enough is enough. Um, I don't always believe the police either. Um, there are a lot of good guys out there and good women, but um, we all know about the blue line and uh, that they will protect each other. They sure do. In this case, was, with, yep, but this case was not at all that. And this is what I think people, maybe white people, are. and I've never told you guys my race, and that shouldn't be an issue. I agree, it whether shouldn't. Whether I'm white or black, right, or biracial. Um, as long as you stick to the facts. Um, but, um, you know, uh, the facts in this case, well, what I think white people are getting tired of is that uh, when black people um, tend to, like the Trayvon Martin in this case, they're picking the wrong cases. There is a lot can you, of... Can we please uh, stop talking about... I mean, you just said it shouldn't matter, and then you went on to make a ge- generic statement like, can white finish? people think about this and black me... people think about that, and that's not true. People are individuals, and they think different things. People with a black okay. tone of skin have different opinions about Trayvon Martin, and they have different opinions about Michael Brown and Ferguson, and so do people with a white uh, tone of skin. I mean, this is ridiculous to you put everybody in a group. You didn't let me finish. You didn't let me get the period on my sentence. I think that people are seeing that in these two cases, both of these kids were obviously at fault. Um, Or I shouldn't say kids because one was four days short of 18 and Michael Brown was an adult. Um, There are so many cases of racism, but people aren't taking up those cases, these valid ones. They're, They're jumping on the wrong side. But getting back to the facts, the actual witnesses that cleared the officer, it wasn't other officers, it wasn't the officer's testimony himself. They were six individual black people who did not know each other. They were in fear for their lives from their own race. And um, they were given protection. Uh, one woman barricaded herself in. She refused to talk. She um, uh, was threatened with uh, going to jail Um, if she didn't testify to the grand jury because they wanted to know the truth, but they were terrified of their own people. And so it was the six black uh, individuals that cleared this cop. Everything. He never had a I'd never heard that. Um, You know, like some of the things. absolutely. Read the report. Read the federal report from Eric Holder. Eric Holder made an announcement on TV, and this is what he said, and this was wrong, and we all probably know that he was going to, he wanted to get this guy. His department wanted to get this guy. And um, saying and things like terrified of their own people is, it sounds like. You know, again, you're putting people into some kind of a category there where they don't belong. It I'm not. I don't consider words. people who are of a white tone of skin to be my people. That's Good point. Meaningless this to me. Was there, this was their words. Okay, I'm quoting what the woman's quote was. Okay, because she was threatened by black people. I shouldn't. If you don't want her, uh, the 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 form. Well, obviously, we're taking your word for it, right? We don't have this information in in front of us. Well, I I Uh, wouldn't doubt that a woman would say that, but I I have a problem with the stance, whether you say it, uh, Dana, or whether she says it. I agree. 
I agree. Thank you, Dana, for the call tonight. But, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's right. 855-450-3733. I guess I don't what, – what you're saying is extraordinarily valid, right? Like, I don't want my people to be the white people. I want my people to be the good people. Yeah, you know, my people, if I have people, are the people who believe in liberty and respecting others and, uh, you know, allowing other people to be free. And to me, the color of their skin or their gender or where they were born is immaterial. Mostly this is a uh, this is a conversation about how to say things. And I, I think that this is a it's very it's difficult, right? Like I understand why uh, people are upset on all sides. I can understand why people chose to take this case, uh, even though I don't think uh, Michael Brown's particularly, uh, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of sympathy for him. Uh, because when you look at places like Ferguson, where they have a largely white police force and a largely black population, you see that um, of the population that when you look at, let's see here, I've got some statistics on it. Um, n- uh, the blacks are 67 percent of the population of Ferguson, and they receive 90 percent of the citations issued um, from uh, 2011 and 2012. Like I could you see how this might be interpreted by somebody that if blacks for whatever reason are receiving more uh, police attention how this might be interpreted as institutional racism no. i'm not saying it is so when she was making those claims about the witnesses i was remembering hearing something that might have possibly uh, contradicted that and a quick google search Reveals this story, Mark, from December of 2014. So fairly, you know, late in the game here. This is well after the Ferguson incident yeah. had occurred in the summer. Uh, according to CNN, more than two weeks after St. Louis County Grand Jury did not indict Officer Darren Wilson in the killing of Michael Brown, there are new revelations about the evidence that drove their decision. Witnesses admitted to lying. According to Robert McCullough, St. Louis County prosecutor, quote, some witnesses admitted they didn't actually see the shooting or only saw part of the shooting, or only repeating what they heard on the streets. Others changed their story. The grand jury had to figure out who and what to believe. Danny Ceballos, a CNN's legal analyst, said, quote, This is demonstrating to the citizens what people in the justice system have known for a long time, that eyewitness testimony, the data is increasingly showing, is inherently, at best, unreliable. At worst, it's completely unreliable. Thousands of pages of documents made public turn up several examples of testimony with little or no credibility. Witness 22, whose testimony was at first damaging to Officer Wilson, admitted she lied when pressed by investigators, eventually telling the grand jury, quote, I just felt like I wanted to be part of something. I didn't see what I told the FBI. Unquote. Testimony from Witness 35 might have helped lead to an indictment of Officer Wilson, testifying that Michael Brown was, quote, on his knees when shot in the head by Wilson. However, it wasn't true. The witness admits to making that story up. In one exchange, the prosecutor asked, quote, are you telling us the only thing that's true about all of your statements before this is that you saw that police officer shoot him at point blank range? The answer was yes. It happened on both sides. Witness 40 supported Wilson's version of what happened, but prosecutors revealed she posted a racist comment online the day of the shooting that read, quote, they need to kill the expletive expletive. It's like an ape fest, unquote. When questioned about what she allegedly saw, she admitted to having gathered some details from news reports. Right, and this is this is really the problem. When you're getting all your information from the news, you're taking a sanitized uh, point of view. I'm getting from the DrudgeReport.com, uh, here, Drudge.com, 75% of Ferguson citizens have an arrest warrant. Mm. Why wouldn't what? these... Seventy. Well, it's crazy. And remember, 67 percent are black. So, yeah. um, you know, I bet that's disproportionately black, just as Good a guess. Lord. And can you imagine, like, if they pick up four people, three of them have a warrant, (laughs) you know? Dorian Johnson, another witness, said, quote, we took off running, unquote. He was one witness who remained consistent. He was with Brown at the time of the shooting. Johnson told a nearly identical hands-up version of what happened to county and federal authorities, the grand jury, and the media. Quote, he shot again, and once my friend felt that shot, he turned around and put his hands up in the air and started to get down. But the officer continued to come with his weapon drawn, and he fired several more shots. 62 witnesses total, more than 5,000 documents of testimony presented. 
Uh, Josh Lev, CNN correspondent, said no, and that's something else that's really important for people to learn about this as you piece through the testimony. I'm sorry, the question that he was responding to was, did the ones that were credible have all the same version of the shooting? And he said no. no. Uh, so look, this is just more information here to show you that whatever the witnesses say ain't worth crap. In yep. a lot of instances, if you don't have a witness with a video camera in their hands, forget about it. This is right. This is why I want a video camera and I should be able to have it for my police officers. And no, I don't want them to be able to turn it off. All right. There's more on the way well, here. I tonight. do want them to be able to turn it off, but I just don't think that anything that they sh say should be considered evidence. I want video. That's evidence. 855 450 freeze the toll free number 855 450 3733. Free talk live. Well, I did it. I finally left the Empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, March 15th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,159 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. Antiwar.com reports exiled opposition factions from Syria increasingly resigned to the reality of their situation on the ground and likewise worried about the rise of the Islamic State are discussing a proposal for their next big meeting to leave President Bashar al-Assad in power. Publicly, the opposition has long insisted that there is no discussion to be had with the Assad government without the understanding that Assad steps down immediately. The new proposal would call for elections in two years. Even this is unlikely to actually happen since the opposition has little power and Assad's current team, having been re-elected in 2014, extends through 2021, but it reflects a shift of the opposition towards Assad's camp. The U.S. might be coming along for the ride as CIA Director John Brennan was quoted yesterday as saying that the U.S. is concerned about the collapse of Syria if Assad was removed from power, despite continuing to publicly insist they want him gone. Since the Syrian opposition is so heavily bankrolled by the U.S. government, this may reflect the increasing U.S. uncertainty about the future as well. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. 
UPI reports a new report from Capital New York claims thousands of edits of Wikipedia articles related to police brutality can be traced to the New York Police Department headquarters. The report says computer users identified by Capital as working on the New York Police Department headquarters network have edited and attempted to delete Wikipedia entries for several well-known victims of police altercations, including entries for Eric Garner, Sean Bell, and Amadou Diallo. Capital identified 85 NY PD addresses that have edited Wikipedia. The report claims the New York Police Department edits also applied to pages referencing the department's stop and frisk policy and certain political leaders. The edits appear to have been occurring for the past 10 years. The report claims Garner raised both his arms in the air was changed to Garner flailed his arms about as he spoke. Garner was also considerably larger than any of the officers, continued to struggle with them, was also added to a page referencing Eric Garner's death at one point. All of the edits appear to be an attempt to minimize the controversy related to the police killings and to improve the image of people connected to the police department. A New York Police Department spokeswoman told Capitol that the incidents are under review. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports hundreds of people gathered on Saturday for the funeral of a 19-year-old man killed by a police officer in Wisconsin's capital on March 6th, a shooting that prompted protest over law enforcement treatment of minorities. Tony Robinson Jr., a biracial young man, was unarmed during a confrontation with a police officer in Madison, and his death was the latest in a string of shootings of unarmed black and Latino men that sparked a national debate over race and police tactics that has reached President Obama. About 1,600 people descended on a Madison area high school field house to remember Tony Robinson, also known as Terrell. Robinson's friends and family were joined by somber residents who traveled from around the state to pay their respects, as well as political leaders including Senator Tammy Baldwin and Representative Mark Pocan. Reverend David Hart told mourners that Robinson was another young black male who lost his life too soon. He said, too many of our children are dying before their time. We must not accept that narrative that has become all too common. Before the funeral, Robinson's family had asked those who attended to leave their social and political concerns at the door. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In Baltimore, the streets have gotten safer thanks to the success of the new permanent daylight initiative, which aims to prevent crime by illuminating the entire city 24 hours a day using high-powered floodlights. It's just that it's so bright all the time, even in the rain. City officials say there have been a zero violent crime since the start of the program, except for one man who vandalized the light by throwing his body off a building into it. Now let's set our crosshairs on to Mountain View, California, where Gmail servers were down for nearly two hours today. Today. In an online statement, the company said, tremble before Google with the mere flip of a switch, we can bring you to your knees. After reestablishing service this afternoon, Google changed its logo and released a statement saying, if not appeased with a 20% increase in Google Chrome downloads by the next vernal equinox, they will take back their generous gift unto mankind of colored conversation labeling. All right, you can take off your helmet. You have survived the news blitz. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you may dial toll-free here and bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 as we launch into the second hour of this live Sunday edition with you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. And we've talked about uh, the minimum wage and Ferguson actually is back in the news. Uh, by the way, Mark, you looked at this Drudge site that you were citing you called it Drudge.com, which is the site that you were citing. I was a little confused. I thought yeah. you meant it was Drudge I'm Report. I'm befuddled by this thing, it's Tom, honestly. It's not Drudge Report. No. You are citing a website called Drudge Retort. Right, and I, I did see that up there, and I was just wondering, is that a section of the Judge Report, you know, like where he addresses things? I don't know. No, it seems pretty clear to me that this is a site that is 
sort of counter to the existence of Drudge Report. Look, if you look over on the left-hand side, uh, you see there's a lot of lefty kind of blogs there. Mother Jones, Progressive Populist, mm -hmm. uh, Slate. So essentially, you know, the viewpoint on the Drudge Report is sort of a right-leaning viewpoint editorially, from what I understand. Yeah. And so this is the Drudge Retort. Now, whether or not whether that means that this uh, story about 75% of the people in Ferguson having warrants out for their arrest. It's a crazy number. Uh, I don't know if that's, a, you know, whether or not that's true is hard to really say because it's just essentially a text entry here on this site. And there's no actual citation as far as... Where did they get that information? What they do say in the entry mark is that uh, there apparently are... Let me I'll actually pull up what exactly it says here. The claim is, posted on March 13th, in the city of Ferguson, nearly everyone is a wanted criminal. That may seem like hyperbole, but it is a literal fact. In the Missouri city, with a population of 21,000, 16,000 people have outstanding arrest warrants, meaning they are currently actively wanted by the police uh, in other words, if you were to take four people at random, the Ferguson police would consider three of them fugitives. I don't know if the fact that they have 16,000 warrants means that all 16,000 of the people they have warrants for live within city limits. Right. Are there 16,000? Does the Ferguson Police Department have out 16,000 uh, warrants on 16,000 different people? Or, I mean, like, so I guess that's a confusing number, too. Yeah. Uh, but it does I'm say I'm calling that, it into question here. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I questioned it from the very beginning, yeah. uh, but I, you know, what, what are you going to do on it? Um, I, yeah, I, I just have to say that I, it still sounds like this police department acts very similar to an occupying force. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Paul's in Arkansas listening to KSOD <laughs> in Pangburn. Hey, Paul. Hey, um... You know, I had to call to make sure this was Free Talk Live because the points that are being made should have been dead more than a month ago. Uh, the forensic report from the police, yes, but a forensic report showing where things entered and exited bullets and such, and uh, I don't know if there's scratches or whatever, indicated the police officer's story was true. The Department of Justice independently affirmed that everything aligned with what Sergeant Wilson said, uh, the, you talk about the thin blue line, but hey, and you can t t say only racism out of it, but it absolutely is involved. There's a black line, too. And I don't know if you saw when Al Sharpton was in town, who, gosh, who, does it, who can't create peace but Al Sharpton? Uh, there were signs written on the side of a uh, business, snitches get stitches, open threats to people. If they tell on people who looted, tell me there's not a racial situation. Pretending it's not there doesn't make it go away. Time to wake up, gentlemen. What are you suggesting? Are you suggesting that there weren't uh, white people who were looting? Oh, he hung up the phone. Well, the black line, he says, Mark. What do you think about that? Well, he didn't deny that there was a blue line, and mm -hmm. that's really what the issue is. Is you know, I don't think that Al Sharpton represents all black people. If you think that, you've bought the line. You know, you're you're his sucker. Good luck. Um, mm. I I don't think many black uh, most black people believe that either. I think that many times people who feel that they're they've gotten a short end of the stick in life, like. Right, they should take responsibility for their lives. There's no doubt about it. But also, right, there's an argument to be had on the other side here. And if you just uh, diminish that argument, um, then then you're, you're you're as much of the part of the problem as anyone else. I think you can't be you can't talk about the Jim Crow laws in this country until you talk about the drug war. When you talk about the drug war, you enter it in, you see how uh, you know blacks in this country have been marginalized, and that's the the difficulty. How do you, with a with a record, um, when the only way that you feel like you can get out of out of uh, poverty is by selling drugs, and then you're liable to go to jail? And it's a big cycle. It's a real problem. Yes, there are blacks that have made it, and I think that they, you know, that should be shown as an example. There's no doubt about it. But I don't feel like many believe that there's a way out for them. The city of Moore, Oklahoma, says they're standing behind the cops who beat a father to death in front of his family. The wife of the man is filing suit against the city and the police department. This story from countercurrentnews.com. But it seems that the officers who killed Luis Rodriguez have made another enemy. The video just released by hacker Bitcoin Baron introduces himself to the city of Moore, saying... 
Thank you for allowing me inside of your systems and able to plant a virus inside of it. The video adds that some information found on their website or computers sim uh, seems to be held for ransom, apparently being sensitive in nature. As a result, Bitcoin Baron tells the city of Moore, quote, send me 100 Bitcoins or I will have fun with what I obtained. Unquote. The YouTube description echoes this message, saying, send 100 Bitcoins to this address and provides the address. The attack is in response to the lawsuit, which named more police officers Joseph Bradley and Ryan Menard as defendants in a civil case filed by Nair Rodriguez, the wife of Luis Rodriguez. Rodriguez was ruled to have died from heart failure while being pepper sprayed and beaten by officers during an incident at a local movie theater. You may recall the incident with Rodriguez. A dispute, a dispute took place between Nair and her 19-year-old daughter. The family was in the Warren Theater during the early hours of February 15th when Nair slapped her daughter, who had just been caught in a lie. Mrs. Rodriguez had walked off, angry at her daughter. That's when Luis went to try to calm her down. Right then, several more police officers swarmed Luis. Both uh, the daughter and Nair witnessed everything that happened next and captured much of it on a cell phone video. Luis, who is 44, attempted to get by the officers who demanded identification from him, even though he had not personally done anything. For his crime of ignoring the officers, five cops took him down, pepper sprayed, and then proceeded to beat him to death. His daughter explained, quote, five guys got on top of him, beating him ruthlessly on the head, just pow, 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 even with knees, her eyes full of tears as she explained it. Court documents in the suit filed by the, uh, his wife say the officers were unreasonable in their use of force against Rodriguez, who had neither posed a threat to them nor committed any crime himself. The suit adds that, quote, the officers in private security tackled Luis to the ground and savagely beat him to death. It also says that first responders negligently treated Luis, ultimately causing his death, and that in collusion with the police, the Oklahoma State Medical Examiner produced con uh, what the I guess the report they produced con contradicts the clear facts surrounding Luis's death. It adds that District Attorney Greg Mashburn, quote, appears to have a history of justifying the legal use of force, including deadly force against civilians. What sort of files did Bitcoin Baron find on the city of Moore's systems? That remains to be seen, as does the outcome of the suit. But one thing's for sure, the city of Moore, prosecuting attorney, and the police department have made themselves an enemy they probably wish they hadn't. Maybe it's time for prosecutors and police administrators to start holding criminal cops accountable for their crimes. And so here you have yet another example of police beating someone to death, uh, you know, basically unprovoked, it sounds like, for not answering their question, not identifying himself. And by the way, if you're on foot, and in a lot of places, if a cop asks you to show identification, in many places you aren't obligated to. Now, there may be some jurisdictions where you are, so you'll have to check your local ordinances or statutes or wherever the hell you would look to find that uh, that information. But usually the general rule with police contacts is if, they, if you're walking down the street and the cop's trying, to, a cop's trying to ask you questions, you can just ignore them. Right. They're just a person. You don't have to talk to people that you don't want to talk right. to. Um, that, part, that goes into a free country. I would also point out that this is uh, sort of the... What's being exploited here by the internet? Uh, you know, the internet is a disruptive, what they call in business, a disruptive technology. It changes the way things have been done. Well, uh, essentially, this is war on the internet. This is what it looks like. This guy has gone to war with a city, and when you have a centralized organization like a city, you can be that that central organization can be attacked. You'll note that it's not uh, the citizens of that city that are being attacked. It's just the government website. So this is one of the inherent difficulties of running a, a monopoly organization. We'll come back. Your calls and thoughts are welcome here in moments at 855-450 free. Honestly, we canceled an appointment to have Jake euthanize to give Dynavite a chance to save this dog's life. Jake is an eight-year-old male Akita. His entire stomach and groin area, his face, his elbows, his ears, every orifice was just riddled with yeast and sores. We had a vet treat him, and Jake didn't respond at all. My son heard a commercial for Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within four days, Jake started to heal. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. The yeast is receding, and now his belly is completely cleared up. It chokes me up. It brings tears to my eyes. 
everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, it is Live Sunday edition of this program. Of course, you, as always, can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've been talking about some naughty police. Uh, There's been apparently a hacker in the realm of, well, who knows where exactly, but the hacker has sent a message on YouTube calling himself Bitcoin Baron to the city of Moore and their police department, Moore, Oklahoma, where apparently a man was beat to death uh, in front of his family for not answering the police when they demanded identification of him at a movie theater. Uh, They just decided to crush the life out of him, apparently. And so the hacker in this case has demanded 100 bitcoins. And bitcoins right now are uh, about 300, almost not quite, $300 uh, per each. 285 or so. So, you know, that's what $28,000 is what he's asking for. Right, something like that. It's for extortion. It seems low. It does. It does seem like that. So you know, the hacker has allegedly gained entrance into the city of Moore's computer systems, and whether that's true or not, uh, you know, who knows if that's true. But this guy's put that out uh, out there, and uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting when anonymous and these hackers uh, target the police departments of uh, of the United States when they are involved in some sort of shenanigans involving possibly crushing the life out of some person who presumably was innocent at that time. And uh, and it's a way to get back at the police without actually 
threatening them directly without, you know, going physically after an officer, but yet, you know, still kind of make headlines. I think it's interesting. Well, um, one thing I know for certain is is that when you go online, you need to protect yourself. This guy, clearly yeah. this uh, city was not well enough protected. And an individual, you never know what can happen to you. The fact is your internet service provider is, you know, saving all your surfing history. Criminals are trying to sniff your Wi-Fi packet, packets, Wi-Fi packets, and governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the internet. ProXPN can solve all of that. You just go and download their app for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, even Linux. Um, just connect to the internet and you're protected from all of it. No more prying and no more spying. One account works for all your devices simultaneously. Simultaneously. Now, when you say simultaneously here, Ian, does that mean that I can use my computer and my um, uh, cell phone at the same time, or how does that work? I don't believe that's the case. Okay, so I just need one account, but um, I have to, uh, you know, kind of log off and on. Yeah, I think the idea is you can only be on one at each uh, at each time. If I'm recalling, because someone gave us clarification on that a long time ago when we first started advertising. Okay, and kind of wonder about that. Anyway, you just go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 and you'll get 50% off of an annual account. It's about five bucks a month. Um, FTL50 will get you a savings for the lifetime of the, the account, no matter how long you have it. Uh, it's a premium account that you go with. You, there's a um, full week money back guarantee that you can try it out with. So go get it today. Uh, you can... Get unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world. You can privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites. It's proxpn.com. They don't keep any records of your online habits. Proxpn.com slash FTL, coupon code FTL50 for a great discount. So let's change gears here. Get away from the bad cop stories because there's no shortage of those. They're a real bummer. Into the world of copyright, which is also a bummer. Uh, because copyright is an artificial kind of concept where essentially I like the re renaming of it to monopoly privilege, where essentially the government uh, protects artists from competition, protects them from uh, derivatives, if you will, people taking an idea and sort of running with it on their own. And that's what's happened in this case uh, out of uh, Los Angeles, where the AP is reporting. A verdict has been reached saying that Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke copied Marvin Gaye's music to create their hit song, Blurred Lines, could ripple across the music industry, potentially changing how artists work and opening the door to new copyright claims. An eight-person jury determined Tuesday that Williams and Thicke copied elements of Gaye's 1977 hit, Got to Give It Up, and ordered the pair to pay nearly $7.4 million to the late R&B legend's three children. Now, let's just clarify something here. Marvin Gaye's daughter, Nona Gaye, and the other two kids, I don't know who they are, but Nona's at this press conference. She didn't write the song in question. No. Right? She uh, was probably very, very young at the time that it was written. We're talking about uh, more than 35 years ago. Uh, $7.4 million to the kids who had no active role in this song whatsoever. Right. So if you were a supporter of... Uh uh, copyright, you would also have to understand that in this case, the heirs have done sort of nothing to uh, as far as this creative work goes. So what you're saying here is, is that what we should do is create a class of people who uh, apparently can live based solely on one hit single from their, uh, you know, their, their former dead loved one. I, I find this, and now with the, uh, what is it, the artist's lifetime plus 99 years? I don't know. That's what uh, the Sonny Bono law was supposed to be, and I okay. think so. I think we're talking. I think we're talking about the artist's lifetime plus ninety nine years. You're not just talking about a class of children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren who apparently aren't going to do anything productive uh, with their lives because they don't have to. They've just got you know they don't have, they don't have the same incentives we do. Uh, this is crazy. Um, I mean, it's going to destroy the music industry. Millions, uh, millions more in potential future profits for Blurred Lines are also now at stake. The gay family will seek an injunction against the song, which will give them leverage to negotiate for royalties and other concessions, such as songwriting credit, although Tuesday's verdict could face years of appeals. While the verdict affects Thick and Williams' finances in the short term, artists and music industry lawyers will likely face new constraints as they sort through the verdict and its implications. 
Howard King, lead attorney for Thick and Williams, said in closing arguments that a verdict for the gay family would have a chilling effect on musicians trying to evoke an era or create an homage to the sound of earlier artists. Williams contended during the trial that he was only trying to mimic the feel of Gay's late 1970s music, but insisted he did not use elements of his idol's work. Quote, today's successful verdict with the odds more than stacked against the Marvin Gaye estate could redefine what copyright infringement means for recording artists, said an intellectual property attorney, Glenn Rothstein. He said the decision sets a precedent because, quote, paying homage to musical influences was an acceptable and indeed commonplace way of conducting business and even showing respect for one's musical idols. But after today, doubt has been cast on where the line will be drawn for copyright infringement purposes. Yeah, it, it gets very difficult. Um, when you're talking about derivative works, uh, the, the you know no one's going to claim that the songs are the same, right? But they are going to claim that they're similar. And yeah, they're, like the backing track sounds like Marvin Gaye the, in that song. The question that you have to ask yourself is, is um, how many uh, variations are there of music that sounds good? Only so many. Right. Like There's I, only so many ways you can organize those notes. Right. You can only organize the notes in so, so much of a fashion. We know that some of those fashions are going to stink, right? And some mm -hmm. of them are great. So <laughs> what do we do? Have we organized them all at this point and given them as intellectual property to everybody? Maybe we should just let a computer come out. You know, at this point, I should just have a computer spit out all the organization of notes that it can possibly do and then sue the crap out of people who make uh, songs that have... I did it first! ...a sufficient number <laughs> of these notes! I mean, I I don't know what to do. The, another, another thing, there was a... Uh, a style of rap back when I was a kid that doesn't really exist anymore because of uh, copyright, that basically they would take portions of songs and sort of play them back, um, and you can't do that now. Let's talk more about it coming up here in a moment. You can share your thoughts on copyright, intellectual property, or bad cops, whatever you want to discuss here. 855 450 free. How do you feel about this case? So who else will you meet at the Get Prepared Expo? For starters, from Republic Broadcasting, John Moore and John Statmiller. From GCN, Aaron and Brad Dakins, Joyce Riley, and me, Vincent Finelli. Joining us are the instructors whom you've learned to trust. Surgeon of the Year, Dr. Norman Shealy. Engineer, Matt Stein. The real Fox Mulder of the X-Files, Dr. Richard Allen Miller. Author and analyst, Captain John Reagan. Your counter-terrorist from Central America, Mike Ma. Dental center owner and my dentist, Dr. Howard Shane. Radiation instructor, Craig Douglas. Author and survivalist, Rich Sheban. Author, Judy Dollarheit, Cancer Center owner from Mexico, Dr. Patrick Vickers. Bug out expert and pilot, Captain Bill Sermo. Beekeeper, Jeff Maddox. Seedsman, Mike Knox. Author, Gayla Pruitt. Author, Harry Cooper. Food expert, Joe Acapinti. And Bill Whaley, the junk man. March 27, 28, and 29. GetPreparedExpo.com, the largest preparedness and survival expo in the USA. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 
213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Jared Gilchrist was surfing when he was attacked by a shark that took his leg. Thanks for being with us, big guy. Thanks, this is tight. What was going through your mind when you first realized that you were there with a shark all alone in open water? I felt like a total badass. It bent to my leg and started shaking it back and forth, and at that point I just felt, yes. This is sweet. I can't imagine what it would have been like to see the teeth sinking into your leg like that. It was sick. At one point, I just saw my leg just floating there in the water. It was awesome. Okay, we're joined now via satellite by Dr. Brian Caddy. What condition was Jared's leg in when you first saw him? It was in pretty rough shape. Uh, the shark had scissored through the muscle, and it was all just like hanging off the bone. It was, uh, it was nuts. Yeah, I kept touching it. It was slimy as hell. Yeah, totally. It was, uh, it was insane. Well, doctor, how do you deal with something like this? Well, you know, you're never fully prepared for an injury this freaking cool. Uh, you know, we just tried to stop the blood loss, and we took a bunch of photos because it's hysterical to freak out the nurses with gnarly shit like this. This is the Onion News Network. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to take control of the airwaves. Tell us how you feel about copyright, specifically a case involving the hit uh, track Blurred Lines, which is uh, which came out within the last couple of years, and a 1977 classic from Marvin Gaye, Got to Give It Up. I've actually pulled them both up here on YouTube, and we'll, we'll play a little bit from each one, and you, know, you can decide for yourself whether or not this was a copyright infringement. The decision by the eight-person jury determined that Williams and Thicke did copy elements of Gaye's 1977 hit, and they will now have to pony up $7.4 million, which will go to Marvin Gaye's three children. Uh, so we can talk more about that here. Your calls and thoughts. Welcome. 855-450-FREE. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can go there to get a full pound of some of the best coffee in the world. From BuzzBox, it's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. You just go and get signed up for their program at coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's for you. Just pay the shipping cost. After that, they'll send you more coffee, and you can customize how often you receive it, how much you receive, and the flavor over at coffee.freetalklive.com. Plus, you can feel good because a portion of the profits of each pound are going to microloans, which are helping people around the world make a better life for themselves. So you get great coffee. You get to help people all at the same time. Really, what could be better? Oh, yeah, the free pound. Try it out over at coffee.freetalklive.com. You just cover the shipping, and you can cancel your subscription at any time. So according to the story here at the Associated Press, uh, music copyright trials are rare, but allegations that a song copies another artist's work are common. Yeah. Singers Sam Smith and Tom Petty recently reached an agreement that conferred songwriting credit to Petty on Smith's song Stay With Me, which resembled Petty's hit I Won't Back Down. In the Blurred Lines case, the Gay family will seek an injunction against the song, giving them leverage to negotiate for royalties and other concessions, such as songwriting credits. Nona Gay, the singer's late, or excuse me, the late singer's daughter, wept as the verdict was read. She's probably expecting uh, about two million dollars to come into her bank account uh, from this. I wonder how wealthy these people are already um, for the work of their father, or the incredible work of their father. Yeah, uh, good question. So going on here, uh, she said at the press conference, quote, right now I feel free, free from Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke's chains and what they tried to keep on us and the lies that were told. Wait a second. I believe that uh, Thicke and uh, Pharrell brought the suit themselves. This was them bringing the suit to prove that they didn't do this. I haven't seen that. In that the was story. my understanding of the situation. Oh, wow, um, that wouldn't make much sense. Why would they be? That was how it was explained to me on the news. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, going on here, Larry Iser, an intellectual property lawyer who's represented numerous musicians, such as Jackson Brown and David Byrne, in music copyright cases, criticized the verdict, saying, "Quote: Although Gay was the Prince of Soul, he didn't own a copyright to the genre, and Thick and Williams' homage to the feel of Marvin Gaye is not infringing." 
King, the pair's lawyer, said record labels are going to become more reluctant to release music that's similar to other works, an assertion disputed by Richard Bush, the lead attorney for the Gay family. He said, while Mr. Williams' lawyer suggested in his closing argument the world would come to an end and music would cease to exist if they were found liable, I still see the sun shining and the music industry will go on. The music industry will go on, but I think that um, what you're going to see is... Cautiously. Yeah. It's going to be more and more difficult for the big hits to make a bunch of money. You're going to probably see as time goes by that it's going to be fractured out to, to, to smaller um, you know, p people, which I don't think is the worst thing in the world. But I mean, y you know, that basically you won't make enough money that you'll become a large enough target. At some point or another, there's just going to be these vultures out there, these IP lawyers waiting to take uh, somebody's money from them because they made a song. So I've got the clips here uh, from YouTube, Got to Give It Up by Marvin Gaye, circa 1977, and Robin Thicke and Pharrell from 2013, Blurred Lines. Here comes 1977. <laughs> this is the part. This yep. is sort of the backing track for the Okay, so you get the feeling there, and I'm going to play you Robin Thicke's version here with Pharrell. Everybody get up. They're not even that close. No. I mean, they have the same feel to them. But it's got that feel, but it's not a direct rip. It's not like, uh, what's the song uh, with the girl about the booty? Uh, they, they ripped off, uh, they, they took the actual clip from Sir Mix-A-Lot. Yeah, and, Baby uh, Got Back. Yeah, they took a clip from Baby Got Back and they used that in a newer song, which mm -hmm. is all about booty. And I imagine they gave Sir mix -a -Lot some money in order to do that because that was an actual clip from his song. This is a reworking. This is definitely more of an homage uh, to the original than anything else. It does not sound the same to me. Play him again. All right. Well, I'm just going to pick it up where I, where I paused it. I'm not going to repeat the 77. All right, and then current day. There's certainly some similarity to it, but yeah. um, it's different though. Yeah, it's a different, it's and different notes. Right. <laughs> the fact that now, what well, essentially this this verdict, that's why this is so significant. I remember because when I was when I was reading the story, I was thinking to having heard the song, and that it did evoke in my mind. Oh, this sounds like Marvin Gaye, or this sounds like a song from the '70s, uh, that era. And, uh, and you're, by and, the way, a former disc jockey, so I think that uh, like I didn't ever thought that at all when I heard it. So like, it's I just, don't, yeah, I don't know if I would have thought it was Marvin Gaye specifically, but uh, it did, it did ring, it had that feel to it. But I remembered it being more similar than it actually sounds. Now that I'm playing them side by side, I can tell there, there's definitely a difference between them. It's, it's pretty, pretty clear when you play them side by side. And so what this is really uh, noteworthy for this particular case is it's saying that. Now songs that evoke feelings about what was. Songs that are homages, they're similarly written. They may have similar elements to them, but are not identical musically, are now liable. Mm. They're now going to be paying out millions of dollars to Marvin Gaye's family, not even, you know, because he's dead. Anybody who wants and to sort of riff on uh, punk music from the uh, late 70s is going to be in big trouble. There was only like the three, same chords. three chord riffs. <laughs> So this is really scary stuff here, what's happening. And, you know, these these jurors, they don't even what know what they're doing. What happens if they kill the music industry? I mean, let's let's try to look at that uh, that world. You know, they they uh, the music industry gets is so shackled by this that uh, a bunch of heirs to a bunch of uh, artists are making a bunch of money. Um, you know, essentially, you're going to have to pay more for single hits instead of the 99 cents in the Apple store. You're going to pay a buck 50 or whatever it is. I don't know. I mean, I don't spend I don't spend any money on this stuff. Yeah. Um, I just don't. I don't care. But um, what would you know? So what? So what? So what if that happens? Wouldn't that give a foot in the door for the artists for the who want to wanna sell their their uh, songs for twenty five cents? I don't care. I'll sell you my song for ten cents. Well, I mean, it's certainly true if Robin Thicke and Pharrell were a couple of street musicians or you know guys playing at a bar who had come up with this bass line and, you know, they're just jamming somewhere, they wouldn't have been sued for anything, right? If they're just right. selling uh, CDs at uh, the local bar, then no one would have ever really known or, you know, 
or cared because you know the reason why they're a target is because they got seven million dollars that they can pay out in a lawsuit. I get that, but I mean, I just don't know what I, I don't know what's going to happen. If you, what I'm trying to predict what the world's going to look like. Well, I don't feel bad for the music industry. Like when I think of the music industry, I think about a bunch of crooks. Um, so it's difficult for me to sort of feel bad when a when a ruling comes down like this. It seems like bad guys fighting bad guys in many ways. Mm. I'm not talking about Thick and uh, Pharrell at this point. I'm You're talking about, about business people. I'm talking about the business people that are involved involved in it and you know yuck in many cases is mostly what comes to mind when i think about these folks so it's i guess if i think about this whole industry having a, a wooden stake driven through its heart it doesn't make me feel the worst in the world but then yeah. again i don't have much concern about music i get it yeah. i would love by the way to get 10 cents a, tr- a track a uh, listen on free talk live <laughs> i mean that would be so awesome if if people paid for the, the podcast listeners only, you know, the podcast and sound, uh, SoundCloud listeners paid 10 cents per uh, per show. I'd never sell ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our business model didn't work that way, though. No. All right, toll-free number here. We have here. a business model? 850, barely. 855, 450 free. Our business model is give it away, and hopefully people appreciate it. Yeah. Then, so, <laughs> then crazy people will call you, and mean people will hate on you. The good news is we don't really have any money to be sued for. That's so, right. You know. <laughs> we can't get us. More on the way here on Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Mark of Free Talk Live, and I want to tell you about a new way to be prepared for emergencies. Not just big emergencies, but little ones too. It's a source of backup power. So small that I can put it in my pocket or the glove box in my car, but it's so powerful that it can actually jumpstart a bus if I need it to. Sounds crazy, but it's not. I'm talking about a breakthrough in portable power technology called the Pocket Power Plus. If you get stranded in an airport, in your car, or you just want to go off the grid for a while, the Pocket Power Plus becomes your own personal mini power plant. Run pretty much any kind of electronic device for hours, even days if you need to. The Pocket Power Plus can also deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power that can jumpstart almost any vehicle, even the coldest winter days. Comes with free jumper cables and an accessory pack. Best part, my listeners can now get Pocket Power Plus for half price by going to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Use coupon code FTL to save even more. Go to PocketPowerPlus9.com, PocketPowerPlus9.com, coupon code FTL. By now, you heard about Bitcoins, but did you know that over 65,000 businesses accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co, because at BidBit.co, you can receive Bitcoin by selling your personal items or business products. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products quickly, easily, and securely at BidBit.co. That's B-I-D, B-I-T dot C-O, BidBit.co. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy until now introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together buy in bulk and get massive discounts on millions of popular products it's togethersave.com togethersave.com you can save 20 30 or even 50 percent off tablets smartphones cars appliances textbooks sports equipment video games and much more all with free delivery check it out togethersave.com visit now and start group buying today at togethersave.com What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free and bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Copyright is uh, it's something that has been used for a long time to oppress uh, people and their ideas. And I think that it's not a problem to take ideas from another person and borrow them and make them better or try to improve them or copy them and share them. To me, that is, doesn't bother me at all. And, and it doesn't bother most people, in, in at least in my generation that I know of. I don't know anybody who has a problem with uh, downloading music sharing songs with uh, with one another over some sort of digital media that's so common in the i'm in the sort of the end of the gen x uh in or, and or early millennials whatever you you know it depends on where you draw the line right i uh, was born in the the early 80s and uh you know this is fairly common these people are don't consider themselves criminals for, for doing this stuff. And similarly, if you take a clip from a song and you use that clip or or you do as Pharrell and uh, Robin Thicke did in their song Blurred Lines, use an old song as inspiration to create an homage to that old song, create a feel, a feel for, you know, so that harkens back to uh, that which had come before. Now that's apparently illegal. According to a jury decision very recently, uh, the AP reporting here that $7.4 million is going to have to be paid out because they made a song that evokes a feeling <laughs> that it's not even the exact ordering of the notes anymore right. that's the problem. You would think that copyright law would get more clear over time. Not no. more opaque. And that's really the difficulty here is, is that that's the idea. The idea behind laws is, is that we'll make a rule and then over time we'll refine that rule and we'll get more and more clear on what we mean by the rule. And look, I get it. If somebody, you know, you know takes, uh, for instance, Johnny Cash, I think is, in, uh, to my mind, one of the, 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 the great sort of plagiarism stories out there. Mm. The, uh, the Folsom Prison Blues, are you familiar with the song? Yes. That song is... I think you've sung it at karaoke. Yeah, I love the song. I think it's awesome. It's basically ripped off from blues singers. And, uh, I mean, you know, like, just take taken and put together and, you know, cobbled together. And it's just a mishmash. Mu musically or the lyrics or all of the above? or I would have to get, you know, I would have had to have been prepared yeah. for my claim. But I have heard them played next to each other. And essentially what it, it sounds like, it, is, it sounds like full-on plagiarism. You know, like, I'm going to take this song and put my name on it mm, okay. now certainly it was portions i don't know how many different uh, songwriters uh, you know how many songs he used to to come up with it or anything like that but okay so back in the day of uh, you know the 40s or whatever it was it would have been more difficult for you to know that some poor black uh touring blues singer who hit the honky tonks and dive bars um who had made a song had had it swiped by some white guy who managed to make it into you know a career because he had the look and uh, uh, you know, all, all that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, now everybody knows what everybody is. Anybody can make the claim. So, you know, when you see in one circumstance, I think that Johnny Cash probably should have given those people some money for that song. I don't have a problem with that part, but I think that we need to be abundantly clear when it comes to these ideas. Well, I don't have the problem. I don't have a problem with giving someone something to reward them for creating the idea that you've used to parlay into a more successful career. I think that's a nice thing to do. But I don't think it should be an obligation. Well, uh, I think that what we've shown here is that the government, when it gets involved in these situations, generally makes problems worse, not makes them better. Mm -hmm. The whole idea that you um, that the for the artist's lifetime, and then 99 years after that, uh, that you know that song should be held in perpetuity. 
in a country whose national anthem is plagiarized from an English drinking song <laughs> in the 1850s, right? Like, you, we would still, basically, the national anthem would still be, um, you know, would, would, would be, this this drinking song would probably still be the national anthem only recently, but have been, in, uh, you know, justified in being written. I mean, may, look, I want to know if there's actually anybody in our audience who sides with the uh, the Marvin Gaye family on this one that feels as though... Clearly the jury did. The blurred, right. I mean, the, well, yeah, I, I guess they did. And so there is must it be because they just hate rich people? Because it looks like rich people on either side to it, me. It sure does. I can tell you that. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, Marvin Gaye's daughter does not look poorly dressed here in these in these photos. That's yeah. all I got to go on here. The fact she's Marvin Gaye's daughter, she's probably ex- getting some other royalties from who I would knows think. where. Uh, she seems to be doing fairly well for herself. But uh, let's go on here with your calls and thoughts. I really would like to hear from you if you agree with the jury in this verdict, that you feel that Blurred Lines, this uh, Robin Thicke slash uh, Pharrell song, is somehow a violation of the copyright on uh, the Marvin Gaye song, which the original song by Marvin Gaye, 1977's hit, got to give it up. Let's go to Nathan. He's in Texas. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Was hey that the Anacreon song, Mark? What's that? Uh, the drinking song you mentioned is that the uh, the, the uh, uh, anthem of the Anacreon Society. I don't really know what the the English drinking song that uh, the Star Spangled Banner is based on, but I've uh, you know heard the claim. I looked it up, and that would that seemed to be the claim. So uh, I'm, I don't know if I want to defend the Martin Gay family, but I am curious about your feelings about about this uh, idea of like one artist taking the idea from another and then parlaying it into a successful career because. You know, I remember this story from Ars Technica a while back. There was someone in the Apple store who had a game, and then someone else copied the game to you know, an exacting detail. And then they were getting tons of money, and the person who came up with the game was getting zilch. Yeah. And it, you know, when, when suddenly you take the rich versus rich dynamic out, and it's like suddenly it's a poor, starving artist getting his ideas stolen by you know, people in some other country, it, it doesn't suddenly... St- they seem a lot more sympathetic in that case. Yeah. And I, I guess when I'm, ima- I'm imagining like a free society, how it would deal with this, it's really hard not to imagine that scenario of, you know, I'm just a poor artist and everyone who has more money than me just takes my ideas and gets rich off of them. Yeah, sure. Let me, um, l- let me rebut in just sort of imagining. Remember up until, oh, the music industry didn't even get rock and roll until somewhere around the 40s, all right? So basically everything prior to that, there wasn't any intellectual property laws surrounding this stuff. I mean, music was something that somebody played in a bar or whatever. They heard a song here, they heard a song there, they played it, right? Uh, okay. I, 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 you know, that's pretty much how it went. So um, in those circumstances, somebody's just playing music and getting paid for playing music, and no one really cares where they got the song from. They could sing Happy Birthday to You, and it wasn't a big deal. No one was worried about some impending lawsuit. Right, now you get sued. So I guess that to some extent, like, for instance, let's talk about Lady Gaga for a second. I think the woman's a musical genius, but some people would say she's devoid of talent. Um, but you can't claim that she's not devoid of the. But you can't claim that she's devoid of the marketing talent, right? Like there's maybe greater artists out there as far as the creation of music, but Lady Gaga makes a lot of money because she's good at marketing um, her music. So you know, if somebody writes a song um, and then somebody else takes it and markets it um, in a better way, I think that pr- both people um, probably are, should be looking at a reward. You know, I, I oh, yeah, don't know I what the mechanism is for making sure that somebody gets paid, because I think it's terrible that Johnny Cash made all this money off of this Crescent City Blues song um, that he basically rewrote and, uh, you know, uh, worked over to uh, to make a fortune on. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. That the, the marketing thing, I mean, I totally get that. I mean, but, you know, I, I actually was told a story by Gard Goldsmith, who's uh, who's the, ne- the, other, the host coming up next on uh, LRN. He had a, a personal experience where basically he had an idea for a script and then suddenly, you know, a few weeks later, someone else had suddenly had that idea for the same script and gotten the commission that he didn't get. So it, this is not an academic kind of thing. I mean, this does happen to people. But, yeah, you're right. Marketing does does play into it. Uh, I guess what I would want to see is some kind of market solution where people could pay for uh, some kind of service that would – you know, like reward people for for doing that and not one where 
you know, where you could just copy, basically yep. put your name on someone's work. What about this? Up. What if there was a anyone. news organization, like a call it a magazine or something, that would report on, uh, you know, basically artists that plagiarized other artists if they didn't give some kind of royalty report? You know, a Tadler magazine. The bad as guys. It were. Yeah, they would basically yeah. say, "Hey, look, um, Johnny Cash had made a fortune off of these poor black people who wrote Crescent City Blues. Everybody hate on Johnny Cash." Now, this obviously yeah. it wouldn't have worked back then because. Uh, you know, people were so misinformed that there were young women writing him letters believing he actually was in prison um, for murder and wanting to get with him or whatever. I mean, like it was a crazy world. Somehow, Some girls just love the bad boy. S- somehow these 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 dolts, dullards, and and mendicants believed that, <laughs> that this guy had a <laughs> national <got> single <laughs> from prison. He got his album deal from behind bars. <laughs> it could mean, happen. It's hilarious. It could happen. Hey, Nathan, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. The uh, toll-free number is 855-453. But I agree with you, Mark. That's a good idea. The uh, getting information out there, I don't have an opposition to that. Uh, but at the same time, I also don't think anybody owes anyone anything. You put your ideas out there, somebody's bound to copy it if it's a good one. And that's a compliment when people copy you. 855-453. What do you think? You can share your thoughts with us here. Hour number three is on the way. It's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, March 13th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,156, up $2. Silver opened at $15.54, down $0.05, cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $292.58. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. In the news, a post office in Colorado has been found using hidden cameras to record the license plates and facial features of customers leaving. Fox 31 Denver investigative reporter Chris Halsney confirmed that hidden cameras and recorders owned and operated by the United States Postal Inspection Service were being used in Golden, Colorado, outside of Denver. The camera was found hidden inside a utilities box around Thanksgiving 2014. A spokesperson for Postal Inspection Service declined to confirm or deny whether the camera was collecting data for specific cases. After the camera was initially reported, it was removed. A new bill that would restrict the ability to film the police and create a dangerous definition of media has been introduced to the Texas House of Representatives. Texas House Bill 2918 would require individuals filming or recording the police to be at least 25 feet away 
and those who are open carrying would need to be more than 100 feet away. The bill also sets the standard for filming police to only radio or TV media outlets that hold a license that has been issued by the Federal Communications Commission. A new Gallup poll highlights Americans growing discontent with the United States government. A poll conducted from March 5th through the 8th asked 1,025 American adults what the biggest problems Americans currently are facing. 18% of those polled said the government was the most important problem. 11% listed the economy, while 10% said jobs were the biggest issue. 31% of Americans said they were satisfied with the state of the country. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by CoinArch, offering innovative trading solutions for Bitcoin. Do more than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Use long and short positions to profit in rising and falling markets and boost your returns through leverage. Visit coinarch.com and sign up using coupon code MAX to get free brokerage for the first seven days. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? Well, for a limited time only, the Liberty Beat is offering you the chance to say big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the Describe Your Company section. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, March 13th, 2015. Make sure you check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Texas State Representative David Simpson has introduced a new bill that would require Texas water supply systems to display information related to water fluoridation on their websites. Texas House Bill 1581 would require the amount of fluoride, the name of the company supplying it, the combined amount of fluoride in the drinking water from all sources, the annual cost of adding fluoride to the drinking water distributed by the system, and more. If passed by a vote of two-thirds of all the members, the bill goes in effect immediately. If the vote passes with less than two-thirds, it will go into effect September 1st, 2015. Two new parents are in the midst of a national tour promoting the use of Bitcoin and highlighting their experience raising a child with no birth certificate or Social Security card for the undocumented human tour. Alma Summer and Brian Stiff are traveling with baby Neo, who was born October 17, 2014, without a birth certificate or Social Security number. The family is traveling from Southern California to the Bitcoin Summit in Arizona and the Texas Bitcoin Conference in Austin. They are also working on connecting the decentralized network of individuals who do not submit their children to government documents for proof of birthday and location of birth. You can follow their adventures on their blog online at undocumentedhuman.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Hear from speakers like Charlie Schramm, Dr. Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, and Catherine Bleich. March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Tickets on sale now at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Use coupon code LibertyBeat for $25 off your ticket. That's coupon code LibertyBeat. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, March 13th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The Dick Cheney Vice Presidential Library opens in a pitch-dark, sulfurous underground cave. And a seedless watermelon is coming to grips with the fact it'll never be able to have kids. This is the Onion Week in Review. Following a litany of tragedies occurring over the past year, a report this week from scientists at Princeton University confirmed that 90% of the Earth's atmosphere is now made up of thoughts and prayers. Researchers confirmed that with the rise of tragic events occurring all across the world each and every day, the Earth's atmosphere is 7% nitrogen, 3% oxygen, and 90 percent emotional pleas begging for everything to be okay. In other news, a new study finds nothing that will actually convince you to change your lifestyle, so just forget it. UMass Dartmouth is beginning to regret offering a course in applied domestic terrorism, and a sparrow thinks it might have caught the bird flu after puking seeds all morning. Stay tuned after the video for a brief tear in the fabric of space-time, offering a glimpse at next week's Onion Review. And keep checking theonion.com for more. This is the Onion News Network.
We're back with more Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online over at freetalklive.com. You can enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Tonight with you, Ian here. And Mark. And we've been talking about copyright. There's a disturbing story the AP's been reporting on uh, about Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke's song, Blurred Lines. Hit song and uh, such a big hit that it's been targeted uh, by the Marvin Gaye relatives. His uh, three children have apparently been involved in a lawsuit that uh, was successful for them. The jury, eight-person jury, ruled in the favor of Gay's children. They'll be getting about $7.4 million. And further, they may get songwriting credits uh, for the song Blurred Lines, which is, I don't even know, I guess you could, maybe you could call it derivative of Marvin Gaye's uh, 1977 hit, Got to Give It Up. But the, the songs sound different. The The backing track is what is supposed to evoke memories of Marvin Gaye and that feeling of, you know, the 1970s. And I think that it that it does. It, it does that very, very well. That is what I thought about when I heard the song. I thought they had lifted the backing track from the Marvin Gaye song, but turns out when I listened tonight, when I compared them both together, there's differences between those two tracks. And apparently those differences aren't enough to matter to this jury that decided in the favor of Gaye's children uh, basically, so many of these news uh, sources, they, they don't really mention what we're saying here. They just say, they just report the facts. The fact is, the jury came back, said that this is a you know IP violation, whambo, bambo, we're done. Um, mm. The gay, the gay family wins. Ta da! Uh, you know, justice over uh, injustice. We, you know, let's let's move on. Nobody's talking about this. Isn't about. Uh, you know, ripping off of a riff. This no. is about the you know really a genre. A genre, I don't know if that's the right word, but well, uh, but an homage is, okay. uh, is essentially it's something that evokes memories of uh, of the past without actually being the exact order of notes. So it has that it has that feel to it. It sounds a lot like that Marvin Gaye track, but not it's not identical. And when you play them side by side, it's pretty clear they're not identical. But that's apparently good enough for the jury uh, that it was close enough. And so now songs that are not identical but are somewhat similar to a classic track could be considered copyright violations, and that's going to put a chilling effect, according to some of these attorneys, uh, going to put a chilling effect on the music industry as a whole and maybe make it so artists are less uh, less likely to, uh, to venture into that territory, which means they'll have to find some sort of ordering of notes that has never been ordered before in the history of copyrighted music in order to uh, avoid future lawsuits, which sounds like it'll be even more difficult well, because now the ordering of notes isn't as important as the feelings that those notes evoke. Right. I mean, you know, in the past, it would have been a situation where you're not only allowed to not allowed to take the exact music and, and timing and all that stuff, but you couldn't take the exact, you know, something that's substantially similar in music. Mm. And now it's not even substantially similar, but, you know, just kind of it has that same kind of feel to it. Yeah, and, I don't know how you'll, you know, you can even codify what this decision has been exactly, except that it's now even more wide open for more lawsuits. I suppose at this point in the music industry, you're just hoping to get lucky enough to have a song that's so popular that you get sued by somebody. Like, that's it. That's what you have to hope for at this point. Yeah, I guess that uh, will be an indicator that you have made it, I suppose. Somebody hits you with a lawsuit. Cyphase is on the line in San Francisco. You're on Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything. Go ahead, Cyphase. Uh, hey, uh, I called yesterday about corporations. Yes, and yes, sir. It was near the end. Yeah, and it was... Hello? Hello? Yes, oh. you are on oh, the air. Sure what yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of near the end of the show, and I was sort of stumbling over my words, so I just wanted to try and give it another shot. Go okay, ahead. Sure. And so the point that I was trying to make was um, that corporation or something that would effectively be a corporation would still exist in the free market. And I don't like the term corporation because – Right, right, right. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, how about we just call them businesses? Yeah, businesses will exist. Entities, concepts well, uh, that are separate from let's or – Let's go with entities. I think that's yeah. a good one. Well, it's still yeah, all, I mean, all imaginary. Anyway, go ahead. Well, I mean, 
certainly it's imaginary, but I mean, to some extent, a business is imaginary. I mean, there, you know, there's a building and there are cars and there are people, but a business doesn't exist necessarily either. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all basically just these, um, these imaginary ideas that people create to make it easier to interact with other people, right? Yes. What do you think it is about corporations that will continue on to exist in a, you know, a freer society? Uh, okay. So when I say corporation, you know, just, uh, I want to be clear what I'm talking about is you know, not all the laws that exist now regarding corporations. So you know, there are all these laws about tax requirements and reporting requirements. There's just so many laws. I'm not talking about all those. I'm talking about the essence of a corporation. So, for example, you know, I mean, um, what a corporation is basically, uh, as far as I can tell, is it's a legal abstraction that exists independent of the owners and the shareholders, and it affords some level of limited liability to the shareholders of the company, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And okay. to the operators so, in some case. Well, I mean, certainly that's true. And you know, there are laws that will protect even the executives of a company if they do something that's illegal or if they park somewhere in some way. And I'm not supporting those laws necessarily. Mm-hmm. But the, when you, you know, when you but, use the um, term corporation, it sounds like it right. to some people, right? Like when I say well, that I don't have a problem with well, the concept uh, of a corporation, what I really have a prob- problem with is right, some right. certain corporate laws around, you know, corporate law that's out there, then uh, like, you know, that's a, it's a different conversation. It, it, it molds the conversation sure. differently, and I think that's important. Well, uh, that's certainly true, and certainly in the liberty community, you know, there's a different definition of corporation that is used in general. I think when most people talk about how you know, the corporations are doing this or the corporations are doing that, they don't really mean corporations. They just mean big businesses. Yes, and, that's, I know, think that's what they mean. In many cases, you're talking yeah. about people that simply hate profits, that they believe that profit right. is is an evil thing. And that's really what, one of the reasons Like I like to to, to pull the term corporation out of the sentence so that we can talk sure. about, you know, are we talking about profits here? Is that what the problem is? Are we talking about rich people? Rich people are inherently bad. Or are we talking about, um, you know, organizations where people have less liability? Because I do think in a free society that I'd be able to go out and essentially get a loan on my business and somebody who says, you know what, rather than getting paid back on the loan, I'd like to get a certain amount of your profits. And that I'd there'd be some kind of structure that that person could, hey, look, I'd like to give you a loan, and I'd like to get a certain amount of your profits, but if you go run your bread truck over uh, a, a group of uh, kindergartners, I don't want to have to pay for that. I shouldn't have to pay for that. That should be your problem. Yeah, I think that corporate right. structure, that, that that structure that we could call a corporation would certainly exist in a free society, um, and that um, you know arbitrators would understand that and support it. Right. And I could certainly, you know, we could use some other term besides corporation. I don't think business is the right term to use because you know, even now there are businesses that have corporations and there are businesses that don't have corporations. So a business and a corporation, not quite the same thing, but you know, I guess we could use the term. Well, but you what know, you were describing yesterday it, sounded like a business to me. I mean, you were saying, oh, well, you know, without the government corporations, there would still be corporations in your mind in a you know, truly free market. And you gave examples of people, uh, executives creating a bank account and things like that. And uh, if you want, we can continue to discuss it here um, because I, I think that, you know, if you're going as in the in a, without with the world without corporations, you could still have a business having a bank account with the business name on it without this concept of a legal fiction, which is all a corporation is. It's a legal fiction granted or bestowed upon certain people with political connections enough to figure out how to get these things from the government. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733, and join us online at freetalklive.com, where the features are waiting for you totally free. Once again, freetalklive.com. FortGalt.com. This is a fascinating new project that is be crea being created down in southern Chile. And the idea is, is to give sort of a, uh, a space for people 
who say on the North American continent want to have a place to to go that in case things go south here. Um, now they're offering what a very affordable accommodations for those who are looking to establish a little home uh, base outside the country. It's not some kind of sprawling valley full of vast estates or anything like that. It's basically like a condo building. It's going to be created by uh, by uh, Benson Wood for those that are familiar. So it's going to be you know high end, good looking stuff. Um, and they've got some cool con- common amenities, like a maker space full of tools, a restaurant, a bunch of places to relax and socialize. I think it's going to be very interesting. Um, imagine like a, a ski resort or something like that. There's only room for about 100 people, so don't wait until the place is full. And just keep in mind that it's summer in Chile when it's winter in North America. So for many people, that's really a, really a plus. Check it out, fortgalt.com. Um, they've got a really great presentation there. You will not be disappointed if you go take a look. Uh, and they've got units from, I think, as low as around $10,000. It's really amazing. FortGalt.com. All right, let's go back to sci He's in San Francisco calling about corporations uh, and whether or not they would exist in the absence of the state. And I say, no, they would not because corporations are creations of the state. The state itself is a corporation. And they're created for the benefit of the politically connected uh, class, the people that know what, you know, these corporations are and how to use them. They're the ones who benefit from them. The average person doesn't know a thing about corporations. They know they exist. They know they're called persons and they're upset about that. And for right, I I think for good reason, I think it's really insulting to suggest that a, a file folder this legal fiction created by the government is somehow akin to a human being. It's uh, it's insulting. And so, yeah, I think that businesses would exist in the absence of corporations, and they could certainly have their own bank accounts and their own buildings and cars and things like that without having the idea of a corporation at all. I don't see why we even need to stick with that concept. Well, what about an entity that, uh, you know, for instance, many businesses need funding. They can't all be done in someone's living room mm-hmm. uh, for on a shoestring budget like Free Talk Live is. Um, some some need funding. So can I go out and get some funding for my business and offer shares in my business? And then those people who um, you know buy those shares aren't necessarily liable if for whatever reason I do something terribly negligent. Yeah, I mean that sounds fine to me. Yeah, I don't know what you would call it though, but it doesn't. Some I, entity that wasn't, you know, you may or may not use the term like some entity that has some similarities to the idea of corporation <laughs> that exists today, right? Like it's the it's 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 the same problem with using the term in a free society would police exist? Well, what do you mean when you say police? Yeah. Because police, as they exist today, have always been a governmental agency. How about a shareholder owned business there or you something go. like that? Uh, Sci-Fi's, go ahead. Any other comments on this? Now's your chance. Yeah. So I realize now that using the word corporation is sort of, it's not the best idea. And I'm not trying to save the word corporation. I really have no particular stake in that. So we can call it whatever you want to, you know, but yeah, just basically what Mark said, you know, the idea of having, and it, it, it would be a legal fiction, and I do want to get back to that. But the idea of having a legal fiction that you know people can own shares in, it can take out loans and sue people if need be or what's not. It, 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 it's basically it's just a fiction that makes it easier to do business versus saying you know oh this building is owned by your Joe. But really, it's for the business and yes. Yeah, no, I understand that. And I think there is value in making business business easier. Yeah. Right. I think there's value in making business easier. I just don't like the word corporation. Right. And and, uh, that's certainly, you know, we can take that word off the table. I'm not not trying to save it, you know. But um, so I, I do want to go back to the idea of a legal fiction and, you know, you certainly have a negative feeling towards that, you know, as you just made clear. But uh, what exactly is the problem you have with having some sort of fictional thing created in whatever legal system, whether it's a government legal system or a private legal system, that lets you do things within that system? 
Well, obviously, I don't have a exactly. problem uh, with it. I, you know, I'll, I'm willing to use the system to protect myself as well. So, for instance, well, uh, uh, the car that I drive is owned by a corporation. Uh, I don't actually well, own right, the car, but, right? But I, I, I'm not really talking about in the current system. I mean, in a free market legal system, and you know, if you want to call it something different, we can do that. But basically, it's a system of law where law is just a system of rules that governs how people interact with each other. Yeah. I don't know what it's uh, I don't know what it's going to look like yeah. uh sci phase and and well, I can't predict and I that but I don't either, I don't like but... the idea of having one organization issuing these no, things, you know. Uh whatever that whatever it's going to look like, I don't think that it yeah. should grant privileges uh to people. So, but you know, and then the this is the point that I'm trying to make, and obviously I'm not doing it. I'm no, I think you've made the point. Yeah, you've made it over think, and over. Uh, yeah, I think you've won. <laughs> well, Look, I'd like, I I think well, we've agreed. Well, I don't have a problem with the idea of having a business with its own concept or name or whatever, but the concept of a corporation, and thank you, Sideface, for right. the call. I appreciate it. The The concept of a corporation, as I understand it, is that uh, you know the government is – Breathing life into this thing. It is incorporating, taking from nothing, and giving it corporeal reality, right? Like it's making something real. But it's not. It's not actually real. It's just a file folder. It's just a government-granted set of privileges that uh, protects people from liability. Right. That's what it is. I mean, it's not a business. The business is the business. The business has a corporation. So... I just want to take the idea of the corporation and all of the benefits and protections that it uh, confers off the table. And whatever the the free market version of this would look like and however it would be created, I don't know what that what that really means. Right. If we don't have the state, you know, how do you go about this? Is it that you go to the bank and then they ask for some sort of uh, paperwork and you create a bank account under that name and then you can use that bank account to go around and open up things like uh you know like uh like a power bill or whatever would that be sufficient does it need to be that much more complicated you know i think that uh, many of the people so the problem here is the citizens united ruling right like that's the you know what sort of underlies much of this conversation and oh the, I, I was uh concerned with corporations before that, that i know but that i'm ruling just saying, just pointed it out to more people yeah uh, uh, yes that's what's kind of given it its legs yeah. uh, recently and uh, like i get why people say that look Corporations aren't entities. They don't have speech. Why should they be able to have speech? You know, you give money for, you know, money isn't speech. Mm. Corporations are people. Like, I think that those are, you know, all valid. True. Yeah, those are all true, obviously true statements. Um, but obviously, corporations are people, you know, populated by people, and people should be have speech. Yeah. I think that, you know, people will sort of rightly point out that there's a real problem with money in politics in this country. And I wonder, you know, what it would be like if money was removed from politics. Well, that ain't going to happen. Probably not. Because the I politicians are in charge. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. Attention listeners, SurvivalLife.com is giving away free EverStrike permanent matches for a limited time only. These matches are waterproof and will light in any weather condition, rain, snow, or sleet. It will still throw a spark. Its built-in ferro rod strikes at 3,000 degrees, and it is good for 15,000 strikes. Normally, $15. Today, it's free. Get yours at freewaterproofmatch.com. Again, that's freewaterproofmatch.com. Hurry, supplies are limited. Visit freewaterproofmatch.com today. This is Rick Osick, president of Famous Footwear. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S. As a business leader, I know that babies born very sick or too soon cost businesses billions of dollars each year, in addition to the emotional stress on employees and their families. That's why Famous Footwear is committed to raising funds to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in the March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. 
This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. DontTreadOnMeme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're doing a live Sunday edition of the program. And, of course, have plenty of time for you with your thoughts. You just dial on in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on in at username lrn.fm. You can join us online at freetalklive.com, so enjoy all the features that we have waiting for you there for free. And join us in real life at the Texas Bitcoin Conference. It's the second annual We were at the first one last year, and it was a lot of fun. This year, I think it's going to be even better. They're moving the location to downtown Austin, Texas at the Moody Theater. It's March 28th and 29th, plus the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference will also be hosting the second Million Dollar Bitcoin 2.0 Hackathon. You won't want to miss that, plus great speakers like George Gilder, Symbala Nair, David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Anthony DiOrio, and Charlie Schrem, who is going to be the first Bitcoin felon, and I'm sure he'll be talking about his experience there. In fact, he uh, posted a blog post today over on, or not today, he posted it actually a few few days back on charlieshrem.com entitled, So I'm Going to Prison, Reflections from Bitcoin's First Felon. Uh, but he'll be there purportedly in person, even though he's on house arrest. Uh, so looking forward to uh, to seeing Charlie again. It's been a it's been a little while. Yeah, it'd be nice to see him again. I think it's interesting that uh, we're getting reflections uh, before he goes to jail. Yep, uh, TexasBitcoinConference.com. You go there, get your tickets. Use code FTL when you do so, and you'll save twenty five dollars off the already affordable. $150 admission price. Plus, when you use code FTL, in addition to the discount, another $25 of your admission fee will go to Sean's Outpost, a great Bitcoin-based charity in North Florida, helping out homeless folks there. So, we were broadcasting live last year, and we'll be doing it again this year from the Texas Bitcoin Conference, second annual, March 28th and 29th, downtown Austin, Texas. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com and use code FTL to get 25 bucks off as we go to your calls and thoughts. Let's go to Tommy in Glasgow. On Skype, Tommy, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, I'd just like to quote uh, a Bill Hicks. If I'm okay, if I get copyright law for infringement, if I quote a Bill Hicks here? No, sir, go ahead. 
Today a young man in acid realised that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. That we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There's no such thing as death. Life is only a dream. And we are the imagination of ourselves. And here's Tom from Glasgow with my thoughts on what line, I just said the there. I think that's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. It's beautiful. And going on that basis, uh, oh, that, sorry, I, I, need, I need to look at it again because yeah, the, the, to, to get to my, what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, if, if, you, if you go back to the time when, when the light bulb was being thought of and in, in, in the radio. There was all these scientists and people had the same kind of thoughts. And I, I don't know, my, my young boy bought a Rubik's Cube. Maybe it was before your time, uh, but back in the 80s, it was a big hit when I was about my boy's age. And it became, it was very hard to do, but then all of a sudden, uh, people started to do it and it became easier. And I remember reading this wonderful self-help book and how the human consciousness, that when one human being gets a thought and an idea, and once it's put out there, uh, the, the 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 creative vibe. I mean that that the the, the vibration. You know, I, I I mean that that phrase. I believe. I mean, don't not take it onto a religious level, but the phrase about how we're all one consciousness, how we're all connected. So the the, the actual use of copyright law is an infringement of our humanity. Hmm. You know, the fact that we're the most creative species of of animal uh, are out there. The fact that we can have conversations and free will and, and make it up as we go along and just free range and just talk is, is one of the most beautiful things out there. And then what they try to do with the copyright law is, is, is to basically, to, it's, it's a form of silence in the people, you know, that you, we can't do this, we can't do that. And you see it all over yeah, the place. That much I agree with, uh, yes. No, I agree with everything that you, you see, said. Uh, uh, so I don't far. think we're all connected, no. Oh, this, I think there's but scientific evidence for that. You don't believe I'll get out. Well, 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 We're you not know, all well, one consciousness, I suppose. You can say that there's uh, uh, molecules in the air and there's molecules in my body, and but what if there's what if there's a higher force and a higher consciousness that we're all connected to, or I, maybe it's just that the higher force that we're all just part of the higher force. I like that. that the higher force yeah. is, is, but I'm that, that is the larger it, consciousness, so, though, Mark. The, but I wouldn't uh, claim that it's true. I like the idea, but I wouldn't claim it's true. Yeah. I think there's a difference. Well, it, well, I it, it, would, it, would, it would, well, it would, it would explain the phenomena, if you want to call it, how people uh, can have thoughts of, of what's going to happen. And for myself, I experience it on a strange level. Uh, you know, on many occasions, I can think of a family member or someone, and out of the blue, they phone me. And then, and in other times, I mean, I'm not saying I'm special or anything, but no, that happens and, and to a lot of people. That's, that's yeah, and, and perception. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, when I'm driving on the roads. I, I get try not to be frustrated at other people's slowness, but perception and anticipation is key things, and seeing things ahead or anticipating it. I mean, just on the road is one thing, but in life, it's it, it, too many people neglect to enhance these inner sights and inner consciousness that are available to us and our inner beings by 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 bringing into their lives falseness, by having an idiot's lantern in the corner and basing their lives around uh, stuff that is false, but by getting out there and experiencing life as as a oneness and having it as you know as Bill Bill Hicks said there, it's it's a giant ex learning experience that somewhere there's a higher force, there's a higher being, yeah, as it guides us all. Who knows? Who cares? But yeah, but channel it, the emotion of, of positivity that you know we're creative beings. Sorry, what are you saying? Uh, yeah, I was going to say. I mean, I agree with your point that. You know, the copyright law gets in the way of that creativity and it, it stops that creative force that, that people have when they have to stop for a moment and ask themselves, oh, well, you know, have I put these notes in the wrong order? Is there a wrong way to make music? I mean, because according to copyright law, yeah, if you if you make the wrong order of notes that has already been made in, in some other point in the past, that uh, there may be men with guns who come to confiscate uh, money from your bank account uh, because of that. So that puts the uh, that puts a real dampener on creative freedom. Thanks, Tommy, for your call tonight. I appreciate the sentiment and the thoughts there. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Robert in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live. Robert. Hey, uh, didn't Led Zeppelin do a lot of plagiarism back then? I couldn't say. Led Zeppelin. Uh, I don't know. What do you got as an example? Well, I mean, the song Stairway to Heaven. 
uh, they say that the song was ripped off from a band called Spirit. Hmm. Okay. And uh, and then the song, the when the levee breaks, they say the song came from a guy called Kansas Joe McCoy in 1929. It wouldn't surprise me if all of those things were true. And, you know, uh, you know, if they are true, then good for Led Zeppelin for taking those songs and making them the most popular they've ever been in history. Led Ze- just says uh, yeah. Stairway to Heaven sounded very sim- uh, very similar to a uh, 1968 song, Taurus, by the band Spirit. Um, and so, you know, there you go. Anything else you want to share, Robert? That's all I'm going to say. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Borrow from the best, they say. And uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. It's it's a compliment when people use your stuff. And it's amazing how how many people get so all upset about this and, you know, butthurt well, about it. And I, please, I, take my stuff and use it however you want. Right. I, I, I understand you have that attitude. But I think that um, generally people get very upset at the idea of the little guy, right? Have you heard of spirit before? No. Me either. Um, so the idea of the little guy, but you have heard of Led Zeppelin before, I right? I have, yeah. The I little guy the getting, radio. you know, sort of suffering at the expense of the big guy. Um, and that, like, I see that, and I think that there needs to be, you know, there needs to be something in place in order to sort of, you know, prevent those things from happening. If I don't know what that is. If somebody takes your idea and does a better job market, marketing it, you're not suffering because of that. Maybe spirit never would have gone anywhere. All right, because then maybe I used the wrong term. I can tell you that people don't like the idea of rich people doing, um, you know, making their plagiarizing poor people's work and making a buttload of money off of it. How's yeah, that? I understand where you're coming from there. Yeah, understand. Do you call? Would you call it wrong? Um, you know, maybe by some people's uh, metrics. Well, b- people's metrics are what kind of define right and wrong, right? Like you have always said, wrong and right are subjective. Yeah. If enough people call something wrong by your standard, therefore... That's uh, why I said I think it's a nice thing to do to reward someone whose idea you've borrowed. But I don't think there's an obligation. I don't think there should be one. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here. You can share your thoughts on copyright or the absence of it. How fast are new Allegra gel caps? I didn't know you got a cat fast. How strong are new Allegra gel caps? Ten more logs to go strong. Non-drowsy Allegra gives you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms in just one hour. Two times faster than Claritin and stays strong for 24 hours. It's relief when the pollen's off the chart strong, even in the convertible. New Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster. Nothing's stronger. Guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your product and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, "Let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas." There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We've got enough time for you. If you dial in right now, we can get you on at 855-450-FREE in these remaining moments. 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, Skype costs you nothing to call us, and you'll usually sound pretty darn good. So connect with us on Skype at username lrn.fm, and join us online, of course, at freetalklive.com. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then please, you can obviously share the show with uh, your friends on social networking sites. Uh, that certainly is helpful for us. Thank you for doing that. But if you also would like to help get behind the show in a financial manner, you can become a Free Talk Live amplifier. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. It's 5 bucks a month. It's all it costs to become an amplifier. You get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only podcast, the AMP-only forum, and AMP-only Facebook group, uh, which right now the Facebook group, I posted uh, the, the, the fundraiser pitch as it is for this African satellite fundraiser that we're going to be jumping into hopefully sooner rather than later this week, uh, if all goes as planned. I'm putting the final tweaks on that now, and i you know, putting the information in the Facebook we'll see how group it goes. to get feedback from our amplifiers who are some very important listeners. Our, lis our, our listeners either want us on in Africa or they don't, and let's see how that goes. Yeah, we will see how it goes, but the amplifiers are helping us tweak it to make it as... Uh, as good of a pitch as possible. Sure. So you get in kind of on the inside when you're the Free Talk Live amplifier group. And so go to amp.freetalklive.com. Plus the five bucks a month isn't going to paychecks. It's going to help us. Well, I guess it's going to Daryl's paycheck. But it's going to help. Uh, it's not going to you and uh, and me, Mark. It's going to help Free Talk Live get on more radio stations. And that's why Daryl's getting money from that. Um, and actually, I pay him in cash. But uh, it's going to Daryl because he's doing great work for affiliate relations. He calls, as do I, radio stations. He's promoting the show. Right. He's promoting the show to radio stations so we can get on more stations. In fact, we've been calling a lot of stations in the last couple weeks due to Dennis Miller and Roger Hedgecock leaving the airwaves. If you happen to have a Does local— anybody, Do we have competition left? Uh, Miller was an afternoon show. Hedgecock, though, was during our, our day part. But nonetheless, we call them all. Anytime somebody leaves the airwaves, we call. It doesn't matter what time of day they're on because they can record and replay the show if they really want to. So if you've got either Dennis Miller or Roger Hedgecock on your local talk station, now would be a good time to call your local talk station and ask for Free Talk Live because your station is probably looking at some immediate changes. Speaking of stations, let's go to Asheville, North Carolina, uh, listening to WWNC where Mike is on the line. Hello, Mike. Hey, how y'all doing? Welcome, Mike. Go ahead, sir. Hey, I just had a question. Can you explain what the difference would be between a corporation and an LLC? Then LLC is a corporation. Uh, LLC, That's a limited okay. liability company. Limited liability corporation, sir. What do you okay. think that stands for? So it's 
so they're just doing like a doing business as you know i see that a lot and i was just wondering if there was any physical difference you know between the laws that govern either one of them you know i'm there not, are differences yes yeah, i'm not a corporate uh expert or anything like that i know there's like an s corp there's uh according some... to legalzoom.com llc stands for limited liability company well it's still a corporation whatever it's whatever it stands for it's an entity it's a corporation yeah. it's an entity it is a corporation. You go and you get it. It's written in all capital letters like every other corporation is, and it's something that is a legal fiction that is separate from the uh, the owners of that thing. There's a company called KeepYourAssets.net uh, that I have used in the past to acquire these things. It's interesting because the LLCs are slightly different in different states. So North uh, New Mexico has an LLC that essentially allows you to uh, to possess the LLC without actually having your name on file somewhere. So not all states have this. New Mexico it may be one of two states that has something like that. Uh, but essentially you can uh, buy this corporation, they send you the paperwork for it, and the state itself doesn't know who owns it. Which is a really crazy way to you know to have ownership of something, right? So that that LLC can own things, but you don't know who the owner of the LLC is. Which really just goes to, you know goes to show you how insane this corporate world is. That the the corporation can own cars and buildings and you know things like that, but it's the person who bears the actual paperwork, the person who holds that paperwork. So if I had the papers for an LLC in my hands and then I handed it to you, Mark, you would become the owner of that LLC. And if we didn't tell anybody that that happened, no one would know that the LLC had changed owners. It's like a bearer bond almost. Yeah, exactly. So does that help you at all, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, you guys do a great job. Keep up the good work. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. And let's go on here. We've got other things to talk about. You know, Anonymous, uh, they have been picking, since we were talking about music earlier, this isn't a pop culture show, but this article, and I haven't, I got honestly, I haven't watched the video, but according to Complex.com, someone posting under the alias of the hacker group Anonymous has sent out a very well-produced and creepy video message for Kanye West. Uh Uh-oh. We don't know if it's real or not, but the seven-minute video is narrated by a man wearing a Guy Fox mask, a symbol of the group. The mysterious man attacks Kanye West for a number of incidents, most notably his outburst at the Grammys, and says that he steals... Which one? Yeah. He says he steals... (laughs) His outburst at the Grammys. His outbursts at the Grammys. Uh, Says he steals the spotlight from people who work just as hard as he does and questions him for his lack of respect. The video gets personal at times throughout and mentions West's deceased mother and daughter. Watch it above... Well, I'm not going to play it for you. Again, I just thought it was kind of interesting, right? Like, now Anonymous is targeting Kanye West. And apparently in the video... uh, I I read another article about this. In the video, the video claims that Kanye is like a tool of the the Illuminati or the music industry or whatever. That, uh, you know, his job... I think he's a tool. Yeah, that his job is to, you know, distract the masses, the the bread and circuses, yeah. so to speak. But isn't this video doing the same thing? I mean, come on, Anonymous, if this really is Anonymous, and how do you really know what is and is not Anonymous? Because Anonymous is Anonymous. It's just somebody with a mask and a voice changer and, yeah. and all these different videos. It's a certain style, but beyond that, there's no nothing you can really pin to Anonymous. Anonymous doesn't have any beliefs. Anonymous doesn't have any statement of principles. Or anything like that. There's they just nothing. do interesting stuff. They do. Uh, and, you know, again, who is this person? I don't know. So what, what are they doing that's similar to Kanye West? You haven't made your argument. Well, I mean, the, the claim was that that Kanye West is this tool of the uh, the Illuminati or the music industry or whatever okay. designed to distract people from the important things going on in the world. All right. But isn't this just playing into that? I mean, if there are important things going on in the world... Shouldn't the anonymous be focusing on those important things like, you know, the police abuse and government corruption, the sort of the classic things? Now they're well, focusing is, on Kanye West? This is tried and true, though. Um, this is a system that's used by so many organizations to get people to focus on what it is that they want to focus on. You know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, the uh, 
people will use the, uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts co- gets some uh, accolades for a commercial they put out. Some organization co- go- comes out and says, Dunkin' Donuts uh, exploits its workers. What we need is a higher minimum wage. What does that have to do with a great commercial? It has nothing to do with a great commercial. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of thing that gets done over and over again in order to sort of derail uh, the, you know, the media attention on w- one particular thing towards the thing that you want it uh, derailed towards. Is this a good system or bad system? I suppose we could be making that argument. I don't know. But people look at the things people look at. Is it wrong to try to get some of that attention for your particular um, item? I can tell you, or your your particular cause, I can tell you if I don't like the cause, it irritates the crap out of me. If I do like the cause, I'm like, yeah! Yeah, but is Kanye West a cause? No, this is Kanye just... West is a tool, as right. we had previously uh, discussed. So, and I mean, but so, my point is, like, it's you know, is anonymous jumping the shark here? I mean, is this no? Do, There's no such have... thing as okay. <laughs> now you're playing into some other stupid paradigm. What the hell is jumping the shark? Is it and what What's is it jumping exist- the shark? What does it mean when it exists in reality? Jumping the Shark came about during uh, Happy Days, as I understand yes, it. Yes, Fonzie jumped the shark, and the suggestion is, is that the TV show he went jumped, downhill. Went downhill after forward. that. Are you saying yeah. that an organization can make a mistake <laughs> and then no longer be relevant? <laughs> what kind of stupid statement is that? I don't know. I was just asking. You're what do a you tool think? of the Illuminati. Let's go to Tony in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tony. How are you? Hey, we're great. Go ahead. I want to... I want to make an analogy uh, to two people who kind of agreed. One was Newton and one was Jean-Paul Sartre. When you go to make a doctorate, which should be a copyright because it's your idea, you cannot get the rights to the doctorate until you get an advisor. So it's actually an intellectual prostitution because once the the doctorate is completed, the real credit is going to go to the institution. So you can imagine a guy like uh, uh, Isaac Newton with his ideas that no one could understand. There could never be this an This is way too deep. Tell- this is th- Tony, this is way too deep for the last 30 seconds of the show. You can call again tomorrow yeah. and try better to explain I couldn't explain agree this. or disagree because I just don't understand yeah, I don't yet. I get it. Call tomorrow and try to hammer it through our heads, all right? And call earlier in the show so we have time for it. See you tomorrow. FreeTalkLive.com. Are you about to meet the media? If you're about to be interviewed, do their homework for them. Know this about the person who will interview you. He or she is busy, so expect minimal, if any, preparation. He or she doesn't know as much about your topic as you do. He or she isn't as concerned as you are about getting your message out, so you need to take responsibility. Provide a biography and fact sheet, photographs, or other materials that tell your story story. Reporters won't be put off if you supply frequently asked questions. Remember, Public Speaking 101, at the end of the speech, what's the one thing you want them to remember? You can download the document I supply to reporters who interview me and squirm through a video that demonstrates how not to conduct your media interview at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, lrn.fm. 
From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, March 15th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,159 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. Antiwar.com reports exiled opposition factions from Syria increasingly resigned to the reality of their situation on the ground and likewise worried about the rise of the Islamic State are discussing a proposal for their next big meeting to leave President Bashar al-Assad in power. Publicly, the opposition has long insisted that there is no discussion to be had with the Assad government without the understanding that Assad steps down immediately. The new proposal would call for elections in two years. Even this is unlikely to actually happen since the opposition has little power and Assad's current team, having been re-elected in 2014, extends through 2021, but it reflects a shift of the opposition towards Assad's camp. The U.S. might be coming along for the ride as CIA Director John Brennan was quoted yesterday as saying that the U.S. is concerned about the collapse of Syria if Assad was removed from power, despite continuing to publicly insist they want him gone. Since the Syrian opposition is so heavily bankrolled by the U.S. government, this may reflect the increasing U.S. uncertainty about the future as well. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports a new report from Capital New York claims thousands of edits of Wikipedia articles related to police brutality can be traced to the New York Police Department headquarters. The report says computer users identified by Capital as working on the New York Police Department headquarters network have edited and attempted to delete Wikipedia entries for several well-known victims of police altercations, including entries for Eric Garner, Sean Bell, and Amadou Diala. Capital identified 85 NY PD addresses that have edited Wikipedia. The report claims the New York Police Department edits also applied to pages referencing the department's stop and frisk policy and certain political leaders. The edits appear to have been occurring for the past 10 years. The report claims Garner raised both his arms in the air was changed to Garner flailed his arms about as he spoke. Garner was also considerably larger than any of the officers, continued to struggle with them, was also added to a page referencing Eric Garner's death at one point. All of the edits appear to be an attempt to minimize the controversy related to the police killings 